everybody, and welcome to another episode of Knocked Conscious. I've got my friend Chris here. Hello. I've got me here. Hi. And I've got two very special guests. The first guest is Trista Polo from so, Plate Story Podcast. Very Hi, excited. Trista. This is like round two. Round 2.3, I think 2. we're 2.3 and yeah. a half, yes. Article C, subparagraph <laughs> G. And we have an attorney's on the line. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a very special guest. Trissa, would you like to introduce your special guest? Yes, I would like to introduce you to the very amazing Russell Polo. This is his very first podcast interview in his whole life, right? Is that true? I think I, so. I think so, yeah. I mean, I've always been behind the scenes. <laughs> Yay! Yay! We, have to, we have to celebrate everybody. Right? Let's yeah. Do it. <laughs> So, so welcome. Well, welcome. Yeah, thank you. So a little backstory. Um, Trista was gracious enough to have Christopher and myself on her podcast, Plate Story podcast, where Christopher shared his hair metal licensed vanity plate, and I shared Don't Be Evil. And then we did a flippity flop, and we had Trista come on our show, and she told us about her backstory and how she got that. And it was such a pleasant conversation. A and blast. It was fun, wasn't it? It was. Absolutely. So what we did was we thought, hey, let's do another one with some random topic. And Trista mentioned Russell coming on, and we're happy to have you guys. So thank you so much. Trista, I'd love for you and Russell to kind of talk about the topic because you brought it to us, and we're we're just riffing with you guys. So, Well, you know, it's so funny because typically I am what I consider to be Switzerland when it comes to pretty much any topic of discussion. I very rarely have such strong opinions and feelings that I would argue them for over 10 years, keeping the same opinion and being very passionate and um, committed to my side of things. And this is the uh, one of those topics that is an exception to my rule of, you know, I really don't, I don't air my, my opinions in the public eye. And what's interesting is that Russell and and is, what is that topic? Because no, so I don't the, think we've even talked about it yet. We haven't yet. We haven't. I was going to give you Are a you little teasing? more build up first. Are you I was teasing you more us? Yes. Ooh, I like it. It's okay. I'm going to do a little more. So this is <laughs> one of the many things. I just want to apologize to anybody listening because I personally hate when the, produ- <laughs> when the presenter will not get to the point. <laughs> I am I getting okay. to the point. You guys are the best. This is awesome. <laughs> so one of this is one of the many topics that Russell and I have argued over a more than a decade long time period. And it would have been longer if we had talked about it before that, because we've always been on opposite sides. So the topic is, should we go and conquer Mars? We being the human race. We yeah, being anyone. the human race. Does, anyone. Does anyone have any business being on Mars is her, is her position. And, and and why do you disagree about this? Or is that too early to ask that question? <laughs> oh, I, can I, we start with, you want to conquer Mars? Can like, we? Who is there to be conquered? Can, can we please get this patriarchy out of this conversation? <laughs> please, no, well, I think, you, I think you know my stance based on my word choice. Yes. Um, right? So Russell, like any human being uh, that is – built the way we are naturally built, believes that we should constantly be expanding our reach. And we've run out of expansion on this planet. So let's go see what else is there. Mars is close by. Let's go see what they're up to. And I I disagree. I I don't think we have any business doing that. And so that's, uh, that's the topic that I thought it would be fun to argue about, you know, not just in our own private home, (laughs) but on your podcast well, well, yes, the, we, well ahead, the interesting thing is is that uh you asked you know why does she have this opinion and i don't even really don't know the answer i simply know that it's just not something that i can discuss with her because there's there's no wiggle room there's no mo- motion that's because you don't listen to me when i tell you why i think we should not do that i've oh, told you crap. many times Trish so now we're gonna have it recorded mind. We're going to have it recorded so that we can always go back and you could listen to this so, many times. So this is like podcast therapy. <laughs> oh, I was God, just going to say, we're doing couples therapy. We've got a couch. <laughs> there is a can... couch in our You're recording studio. You're going to on it for some reason. <laughs> oh, dear, <laughs> about your father. So, no, I don't want to. Listen, don't after, make, you 20, can't make 
after 24 years of marriage, Congratulations. you know we're going to have things and we I'm disagree sorry, on. Also. <laughs> so, you know. So you've actually had this just yes, no, without the middle part. So no, we're gonna no, the middle I, part. I think we've had the middle part, but not in in a decade or more because it's, it just it just never works. It's just not true. Okay. You guys, oh, we've sure. talked about this I love so it. much more recently because we're actually making mm. progress. Right. And right. So- because because I'll I'll send her a link about you know look at this this uh, s- the robot they're sending to Mars they're gonna gonna you know do tests to verify there's no life there therefore if we went there it wouldn't be screwing with anybody's destiny we're 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 simply going to be expanding our territorial presence and she's like what business do we have we shouldn't be there well that's the thing he keeps sending me <laughs> he keeps sending me articles like look see this is why we should go to mars i'm like no this is exactly why we shouldn't go to mars don't Very you understand nice. I so love it. yeah but, i haven't but been they made a helicopter Hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh, very excited that. about the helicopter. helicopter. Yeah, I, I on, saw a bunch an of atmospheric planet that doesn't have an atmosphere. It's pretty weird. Well, or well, it's, it's like it's like a one percent atmosphere. Yeah, so. it's one percent. So. I, I saw right. I saw some videos on that. They had to uh, put it in a giant vacuum chamber with a counterbalance to to test it out. And I really hope that thing works. But uh, yeah, I'm wondering how how much how much how many particles it can push up to keep i mean it's like a it's like a three or four bladed thing right it's pretty neat it's, looking it's two blades one on top of the other and they spin crazy uh, fast like yeah uh and and apparently if you were actually near it while it was flying it would be like disturbingly loud but there's nobody going to be there because it's an empty dead planet and there's no so oxygen you- to carry the sound so it's probably Helps. Well, there's, there's, there's a very, very, very faint atmosphere. Yeah, it is a very faint, but it would be super quiet. And it, yes. this helicopter is completely – there's no human in it. No, it's, no, it no there's no humans oh, okay. going there yet. Oh, curiosity? Was it Curiosity? Is that the one? Uh, no, Curiosity is already no, there. The one, the, old one. the one that just was launched. Yeah, the one that hasn't landed yet. Um, I'm blanking on the name. It's like Insider or, or, or something like that. Um, yeah, but I'm, yeah, the, I bet we could look that up somehow. If there was only a place, yeah, if there only was a service database of sorts <laughs> that one could type things into, like a cyber web. I think you guys should invent I'm, it together while you talk I about Mars together. things. Maybe we should talk together. with Al Gore like about a this. network of maybe Al Gore I think Al can Gore help us get design a network of servers <laughs> that all talk to each other. I wonder and if his hold web. data or data can his internet capture the warming that is happening? I think it could. <laughs> <laughs> and reverse the polar ice cap melt to so save the bears. We are on yes and no, obviously. So now we're going to bridge this gap of let's. How would you guys like to start? Do you guys want to start with a yes or a no? Where? How do we going to go pro con or how do you guys want to want to? Well, pull I, I'll I'll make my case and then we'll see we'll see where it goes. Yeah, why well, do you need to go first? first? Because I'm going to lose. Ladies, the guy first. always loses. No, listen. Look, at OJ the, said ladies the, first. At the end, oh, that God. didn't go so well, did it? <laughs> that didn't go so well. So at oh, the end of really? any argument, if you don't come to agreement, then you're both winners or losers, <laughs> however you want to look at it. So I, I think that if you're looking to try and convince me of something today that you have not been able to convince me of for the last decade, I, I think you're here for the wrong reason. <laughs> I think we're just having a conversation. That's what so I. So, like, we don't. We're not looking. We don't look to score points. We're just not looking, looking to, to just talk the world, about it. Right? All right. We're just looking to have a conversation. Is, is there a possibility that someone's going to storm out of some room in the no. next hour? Okay, good. Uh, uh, oh, hey, <laughs> are you storming well, look, out? Look, Trista. If if I may, I think I think the law of recency is bigger than the law of primacy. So I think you should let Russell go first. <laughs> If you want to win, that's just my opinion. <laughs> I mean, whatever you guys want. I'm, I'm out. Well, let me let me do this. One woman. Well, let's do this. So, Russell, I I have a feeling that you're you kind of want to maybe go. He does. And Trista, yeah. I got a feeling that you maybe kind of sort of maybe not maybe not want to go. I mean, I could go, but okay. he definitely wants it. You know more I know. than I'm, I do. So I think obviously. <laughs> So I don't know where Chris stands, and we I haven't shared mine. Are you guys – do you guys wanna, think I we're pro wanna, or con? I want to I wanna again apologize to the listeners for this delay. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think that you're both pro Mars. I think I'm probably like the only person in the freaking universe who's anti-Mars, or at oh, least okay, in okay, this okay. planet. Honey, 
why shouldn't we expand our species onto Mars? No, you wanted All to go right. first. Mark, I think it's, Russell's trying to take over so, as host. Oh, it's totally crazy. okay. So, well, this, that's what's great with people who don't know what they're doing on podcasts. <laughs> of course, their first one, of course. <laughs> uh, no. so, let's let Russell go. Russell, go. Real quickly, no, though. No, real quick. Real, no, I didn't no, say real quick. No. I said real quickly. No, real quick. That is different. No. And All right. Trust Wait, me. He's talking. Trista, really quickly. <laughs> no. I, I just have to, just the one. I will stop after this, I promise. Nice. You may you may find an ally, Trista. Okay? I'm definitely not I'm like 5149. Really? Mm. Yeah, cuz I have a lot of stuff that I think about. So I will talk about that later though, cuz I think okay. it's Russell's turn. I I am so also Russell, neutral, so I can be persuaded what? either way by the two yeah. lawyers in New Are York. You I uh, no, man. Everybody was pro Mars. No, That's I don't what open-minded crap. people do. Open-minded people just are open-minded about things. But I could be stuff. persuaded. Russell could have a great case, and I could vote for him in an hour. I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen. True. We're going to have a vote at the end of this? I mean, yes, we are. Oh, oh it's going to be two, two tie. So Senator Polo or Senator Polo. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Do you do you have a pet that can put can be the tiebreaker? Yes. She's downstairs parking. <laughs> Your little dog. All right. So um, 12 minutes, 38 seconds in. Russell, are you getting uncomfortable that we haven't gotten to the point yet? <laughs> I do like to be things a little bit more tight and concise. OK, well, I let's do it. I'm Let's Go. tighten this up. Go. Well, so, I mean, the human race uh, in its entire history has always expanded into new territories, um, you know, within. Uh, a couple of uh, maybe a million years or so from the first humans, they were on every continent in the planet. It's, it's our nature. We've expanded to, to everywhere it's available to us. It's the only species I'm aware of is basically able to live in any environment because we're able to control the living space to live in Antarctica, to the deserts, anything. And, um, you know, it's, it's something, it, it's, it's our nature and we've pretty much conquered this planet. There's no, question what the dominant species on the planet is it's the humans and it makes sense to continue to expand and follow that nature for a bunch of you know exploration and learning reasons and also just to protect the the, the ultimate future of the species we want to be a multi-planet and multi-star race and so we should you know the first step to being uh protected from the death of the planet the death of the star is to expand beyond uh, a single location i think the first step in that would be to set up a permanent base with humans on Mars. Very well said. That was very, I was expecting a longer monologue. That was pretty brief. <laughs> you are concise. <laughs> so, so Tristan, in your same, with that same brevity, can you just say, no, I don't know. <laughs> what, what are your well, Everything no, he no. said <laughs> is wrong. Go. Well, do you, let, let's, well, let's, Let's talk about the, the 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 thoughts that you have about it, Russell. So get, let's give take one of your points. What's one of your bigger points? Just we've always expanded. Well, it's both that we've always expanded. It's in our nature, and to protect the ultimate survival of the species, we need to be uh, diversified onto more than one planet, more than one star. I agree with the star point, but we're there's a physics challenge there, right? And I yeah, get I mean, the stepping stone of Mars being a stepping stone for something. But when we go supernova, Mars is going to be sucked up, too. We, what's we know the physics, yeah. what's, no, what's that, your, that, I don't understand your point. Of, your, what's the physics issue? So physics is uh, light, the speed of light. We don't have the energy to go to another star, right? The sun is our star. In I our understand solar that. System. But no, the no, time we, it would take to get to another star. We want to be a multi. Yeah, we want to live I, multiple I would, places, right? I would disagree. Uh, we have Ooh, the ability hey today now. to go to another star. It just requires a commitment of creating a multi-generational ship. Yes, I'm oh, not disagreeing with okay. that fact of it, but there's other things outside of our known universe, of our known solar system that we could encounter on the way, right, that could be pretty detrimental. Well, we don't right? know. I mean, you got to go to find out. Well, I agree. I totally agree with that. But that's what, you know, that's where I would look at probes and some things to start, right, as a starting point, kind of like what we did with Mars. We put some ro rovers on and then worked our way up. I like that's a multi generational ship. It is. That's a great freaking. By the term. way, what was that show in sci fi? It was good. It's called Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> that is true. Uh. So, so Russell, you're you're you're. I mean, 
this is where I'm going to come with a con. And I'm just going to ask, like, how did conquering other countries work or nations work for those indigenous people? Not saying there are or aren't indigenous people on Mars, but how did that work for the place to which conquerors went? Well, not conquerors, to- explorers it, or whatever you want to call them. it. Totally <laughs> sucked, sucked for them. I mean, there's no debate about that. However, um, in one sense, you know, the Americas was conquered before Columbus and Cortez got here because there were already uh, humans here. Um, and so it's not like these places weren't already explored and sp- you know, spread out to. By, well, they were indigenous people. people that were here, not explorers per se, right? Well, would but you, they, you they were explorers. Argument? Uh, you know, 50,000 years earlier when they came across the Bering Strait into the Americas. Right. 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 But there was no one here. So they were the explorers. They were the explorers, but they weren't the people that came in after. Right. They just, you know, they weren't, they weren't the, the, the first ones here. There's no debate about that. It wasn't right. uh, yeah. Columbus, Columbus and Cortez. It was, it was the, uh, the, the natives that had. The Incas and the Mayans and the Aztecs yeah. were, were, were descendant of those original explorers. Yeah, right. and we know that they emigrated right across the Bering Strait Correct. and all that. So that not arguing any of that. Just My curiosity is going to a planet that we don't know. What if there was indigenous life there? And this is my point exactly. So that's the first point. So Russell, please share your thoughts on that. Like, can we work together, or do we become the conquerors that we were for our, our previous, you know, evolutionary? Are you take asking Russell, over? or are you asking the people paying the bills? <laughs> I'm going to ask Russell because Russell's on let's the say, podcast. Yeah, let's say Russell paying. is paying the bills. Let's yeah, say Russell go. is in charge of all the NASA's. Well, I would think if there was a flourishing native species on Mars, that it would be to our um, obligation to not screw it up, to not you know infect it, not uh, not destroy it. But um, the evidence is, and pretty we have good. learned, right? We have learned over these times that. What we did as we expanded was not great. So we there's a little bit of a consciousness in the human mind to say, let's not trample on everything anymore like we did. Well, right. We but didn't when, when, a, when a herd of elephants you know, moves to a new grazing field, they tend to destroy that too. So it's not like something unique to humans. Well, that's Good the point. thing. Humans are animals. Like I'm not – that's – we are all – we are just thinking animals. I mean, you know, with this consciousness thing and these other – Which means that we have – Within us, the ability to be more careful about stepping on, you know, ants if they're there. But the thing is that there is pretty good evidence so far, and they're they're going to solidify it that if there wasn't everything and ever anything on Mars, it ain't there now. Yes, yes, and I agree with you that we have we have the ability to be careful, but we also have the ability to build an atomic bomb. So we have very dichotomic or you know bipolar the humanity is very bipolar right would you would you agree with that statement that's one way to look at it sure i would think uh that there's many voices and it's uh you know there's never unity yeah okay so the reasoning for going is it it make you know we're looking to expand territory which is what humans have always done right they've always been able to make their environment suit them right they're the we're the only species that makes our environment suit us versus adapt to another environment. Correct? Is that part of it? Yep. Okay. And then what were some of the other points about just that we're gen- – it's just a stepping stone to become a multi-solar system uh, species? Multi-star. Multi-star, which is multi-star. multi-star. Solar system, system. Yeah. Yeah. yeah would that, would be, that would be the, the, uh, the ultimate goal is to, so that – because we expect that the the sun goes bye bye in like you know four or five billion years, and uh, I'd like that you know whatever descendants remain are not going to be destroyed by it with no uh, nothing left of them. And is the human is the Earth going to last that long, or will the Earth be able to be survivable? That's not the right terminology. Oh, from the supernova? No, no, not that. Oh. No, way before then. I right. mean, like, are we going to do to the, the, you know, there's going to be ice ages and there's going to be volcanic I- issues and there's going to be the earth is going to continue to change as it has over the last seven billion years. Right. And so can humans whatever, survive that? Well, it wouldn't necessarily be humans by then. It could be something different. Yeah. But, asteroids uh, but, or whatever. Right. 
But the the life on Earth since it was here, even with the big asteroid that killed the dinosaurs, has demonstrated its capability to adapt and survive. And humans, as I said, are the most adapting and the most uh, resilient species ever because we can live anywhere we want. True. It's a good point. So, Trista, would you like to have a counter to Russell's uh, first point about the, you know, about why we're doing this in the first place or even why? I mean, I took debate in college, but I'm not sure I could quite do like the whole debate thing. Russell yeah, is we're definitely, just talking. We're just talking. Yeah. Russell's definitely more educated on history, well read on physics and interplanetary stuff. He's a bigger fan of Star Trek. You know, like he has a lot more data to go with in this conversation. But here's what I know. We as a species, the humans, we have proven generation after generation, decade after millennia, that we cannot be trusted to be gentle with our expansion. We do treat it as conquering. We have wars over who owns stuff. And we've even had wars over who owns people and if they get to or not. We are extremely untrustworthy to have compassion in our expansion. Now, maybe 10 generations from now, 100 generations from now, we'll be better at it. But right now, we're not. Right now, we can pretty much be counted on to create nuclear bombs, viruses that will take out entire countries. Um, You know, we're just not gentle with ourselves, with our animals, with our resources, or with our planet. And what do we have the right to go and bring that philosophy that is very profit-driven, very, I own the most, I'm in charge, I'm the biggest, I'm, you know, the, the primary. Why do we then get to take that and put it on another planet that right now has its own opportunity to expand and evolve in its own way. If there's frozen or dried up water, if there's minuscule microbes frozen in time from a previous generation of when Mars was better at handling life, whatever life looked like on Mars, and that has an opportunity just like it did here on our planet to evolve into what ended up being humans, doesn't it get the right? Don't those microbial, you know, amoebas get the same right that our ancestor microbial amoebas amoebas did before anybody came and screwed it up? You know, buffalo, people, whoever, when we go into a new area, we use the resources and we use them up unless we're responsible for it. I just don't see us being responsible enough. You know, we haven't earned the right to do it. And I think history and Russell probably could quote and reference a lot more specifics, but I think history shows, look on your Facebook. If I just hit a couple of cute dogs that I like, the next thing I know, Facebook is showing me all the dogs being abused. Why are we still abusing animals? Are we not evolved enough to not do that? And if we're not, why do we get to go to another planet and rape it of its resources for our own survival? I just think it's it's not a good idea. It's not good for the planet we're going to because we've proven that we can't be trusted to handle it responsibly. Yeah. Part of the burden of being this, you know, top of the food chain, the way we are, is that we tend to go, oh, can we, you know, can we do it versus should we do it is the first thing. So all we, you know, a lot of our, you know, a lot of our concern is, oh my God, can we make this happen? Because we want to make things happen. Progress, right? That's what it's all about. Yep. But we don't think about whether we should in the first place in a lot of cases. And a lot of times we go, well, we're smart. We got us here. Any problem that we create from this, we can get out of. And I disagree with that statement. I am a very Einsteinian kind of guy, and I believe that no no problem can be fixed with the same consciousness that created it, for example. So to your point, Tris, I think you're right. Like the 
that invasion piece, right? Or the, as a whole, humanity has shown that it's not responsible enough yet. We can't even be responsible with each other. I I see friends all the time. If you're not thinking the same political things I'm thinking, please unfriend me. Why? Why can't we, why can't we just be in disagreement and still in harmony? Why can't we still have compassion for people with different views than we have? Were you listening to my conversation last night with some friends? I do not appreciate you eavesdropping, okay? <laughs> that is not... Wait, are you uh, Jeff Bezos? Are you? Are you that's, <laughs> what's going on? Look, Alexa Polo, that is oh. not okay. <laughs> By the way, hold on. Hold like, on one second. Real quick. I, yes. I want to have fun with this. I said hold on. I didn't I say... I know, but I... <laughs> hashtag hold on. You guys are going to hate this, but... Go. Alexa, play Knocked Conscious podcast. Is she in the room? Hopefully that's going to make everybody's go off. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> when they hear it on the podcast. So I hope that, I hope that that's, that's awesome. going to happen. <laughs> Dork. Go ahead, sir. I, I love you, bro. You had a conversation so, last So, uh, Yeah, we're not going to talk about that shit. So, um, <laughs> sorry. I cuss too much. Catholic school. I apologize. Um, <laughs> Mr. Oh, Russell. that's where you learned to cuss is Catholic school? <laughs> F yeah. 13 <laughs> years, K through 12. <laughs> Christopher, we think you should go to Notre Dame too. Hell no. Get away from me, dad. <laughs> I'm not. No, absolutely not. Take your altar boy. Go away. So sorry. Uh, and now therapy just ended. Yay. <laughs> Ooga. 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 Dive. Anyways. So, so Mr. Russell, do you believe that your lovely wife has any valid points in her argument. Well, th- th- I mean, I'm not going to dispute that uh, humans have screwed up a lot of things they've touched. Okay. Um, but we've also fixed and improved a lot of things. Um, you know, the food production, uh, you know, from farms is so much higher. The the uh, Farmers are in poverty. Food is made with genetic modifications. Corn isn't even recognizable as corn. What are you talking about? Um, well, these Was are all that, changes. Do you, does, does your wife ever use punctuation? <laughs> it's, I you mo- can see the punctuation in context. The, the bigger question is who's holding the conch over there? I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lord of the Flies or something? No. Um, no I'm to making, Chris's point, what do you think, Russell? I mean, I mean you, yes, you mentioned the farm thing. Yeah, We've gotten better. But that's yeah. not the point. Okay, hang on. We, we I Russell still needs to answer the question about Trista's arguments because Trista made five or six or seven points about the human race and our lack of responsibility and we can't take care of each other and those are valid arguments and throughout history humans have sucked dot com big time <laughs> and uh, for Christ's sake when the Spanish came to South America they were called the conquistadores that's not a good word so have the humans learned enough to not do that again? So, Russell has did, are those points valid in your mind? Well, I'm not going to say that because somebody once did something wrong, therefore no one else should ever be allowed to try it. And so, I think you have to 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 keep you know trying and evolving to find a way that it can work. And I think we all agree that humans have gotten better and are not not you know perfectly evolved nor do i think we ever will be and so i'm not saying that in any you know planetary or solar system expansion we're not going to screw up but i think that um done with the the proper sense of mind and the the knowledge and history of what's happened in the past that i think they could be guided to to do it right as best as they're able and uh to the to remark about you know the the poor little microbes you know frozen in the ice on the the martian poles um, well, what if in the in the uh, motion of moving humans to that planet, we warm it up, thicken the atmosphere, and those microbes finally get to live because the environment they needed evaporated with mar- the Martian atmosphere? What if our going there actually gives them a better opportunity? That's a That's lot a of point. what ifs. There is a what if there. Now, the question I had about that, Russell, and I believe you do make a good point. I don't believe just because we've made a mistake that we can't ever – try again. I mean, I think that's the whole point, right? Is that we always try to improve. One point of mine is, is a better human, a good human? Because we're better, but are we good yet in a weird way? And I know good's like a very shifting scale. Well, we're better. 
we're better we in our technology like better. like russell was talking about we can we can increase food you know and yes we've done it different ways trista but what we've I'm done about, it, right? i mean but, but hold on i'm talking about our humanness yes yeah they're two separate conversations it's not the same as can i make a better iphone can i make more corn on this field than i did 10 years ago i'm talking about how we treat each other yeah, yeah. T- 2000 years ago um, the the populace went to the arena to watch people actually kill each other with you know knives and maces and things you know for the arena that was entertainment and now that has evolved into people talking trash about each other on reality shows i mean that that it, it's still you know um, a a gladiator conflict if you will but it's not as bloody and deadly as it as it once was but it's also but it is detrimental i mean we're finding that bullying for example has has an effect even if it's not physical, right? Even just emotional. Oh, sure, but but I'll and that's take, where I'll social media is really taking off. Being knifed to yeah. death. I mean, can you really? I, can... I don't disagree with that, but but once again, having those things in, you know, people who have experienced certain traumas. I'm not. I'm. You can't. What, you can't compare a slave being forced to battle a lion in front of fifty thousand people in ancient Rome to a tweet. To a tweet. Yeah, I agree. That's not. I'm not disagreeing with that, but as as we get softer and as we get less combative physically, we get more emotionally soft. Absolutely. So the smaller the smaller the phrase could have a higher impact in the future as we get softer. Does We're that sensitive make sense? little bitches. I get it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> God. And I'm not saying we should never. You know what? Just send me to Mars. I'm done with this crap. I'm not, <laughs> right. Just, you know, we're not even going put to Canada. Me, now we're going to Mars, right? Just put me on the helicopter, bro. And I'm not saying that we'll never be ready. I'm just saying the way we treat each other now, I don't think we have any business impacting a completely new environment like a planet who's got its own evolution going on. May I ask a question about the moon then, for example, Tristan? No. Is the moon different than Mars in your opinion, or is it all any kind of expansion for the for humanity off of Earth is kind of seen with a less than favorable light by you? Mark, what about Uranus? Um, <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I withdraw the question. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's not being edited out, by the way. I don't give a crap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay, the moon. So Trista, what did, the moon, what did I not say just now? Trista, the moon, go. I, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting question, Mark, because it, it had already happened when I was born, right? And so I sort of just accepted it in the tapestry of who we are as a culture and who we are as a people. I also don't believe that there's ever been any evidence that it has life or had life or could have life. It's a, it's a good question. I'm not well, sure. Well, we're, we're still on the fence on whether the moon landings even happen. So that's, well, that's I'm not even going to go there. Two podcasts. Yeah. We did there? a podcast about that. We did one on that. It'll we come wore tinfoil hats and everything. Yep. We mm-hmm. put on a foil. Like a bunch of stupid idiots. And and just so you both know, if you are going to put on tinfoil hats, the shiny part has to be inside because ah. it has to reflect your brain cell brain waves from going out. Ah. <laughs> That's how tinfoil hats work. I don't know if you knew the okay, physics behind that. I didn't. That I thought it was the opposite. I thought we were trying to avoid having them Getting listen to messages our in with their. Yes, no, no. See, yes. see, I thought I thought it was the important thing was to make sure that it's all thoroughly crinkled. So that the waves get distorted in different directions, so you don't get a, a direct beam. Ooh, wow. like a stealth, like a stealth helmet. Where it's exactly, just, well, well, it's a reverse stealth smart. helmet. Yeah. yeah, reverse stealth. Okay. I just look like I just look like Napoleon. So we just went from Mars to Moon to tinfoil hats. <laughs> yes, and three right. different the theories happen? of how they work too. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> or I mean, we're never going to agree on anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> the Moon. Okay. So, so we got the philo- philosophical part kind of out of the way, right? We're, we're just disagree philosophically. Trista, you think maybe if, if there's a point now, who, who would deem the point, Trista, to, to take Russell's side? Who would deem the point that we're good enough as a species to do it? Like when is the go point as humanity for, or for humanity? You mean like who would decide? Right. Because okay. just and, like and laws, like be, what's good and what's bad, right? Like, does it need to be all the, of humanity or just the ones who are actually doing the exploring? And that's the question, right? But it's because, not the ones doing the exploring you have to worry about. It's the ones paying the ones doing the exploring. 
All I have to do is threaten to take away my grant money and yeah, you're going to do whatever I need you to do so that I can stay there because I'm a scientist and I want to get the work done. Well, I'll, I'll say this. Oppenheimer did not help create the atomic bomb because he just was just sitting there in a lab and said, I've got all the resources in the world, right? The United States government gave him everything he needed to help make that. Yeah. And as soon as he saw that first one go off, he basically said the look on his face. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Uh, that video? No. Okay. If you look up Oppenheimer YouTube, like I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, watch that comment by him and just the sheer terror on his face after he realized what he did. Right. But that's it's, the thing. It's too right. That's now. what I'm saying. It's, it's scary. After. Yeah. Right. What I'm saying is it's scary, right? It's like we have to we decide whether we should versus whether we can. Yeah. I completely agree with that. But so you're who, saying who decides, and I'm saying right. the people who have the money, because I have to put up the money before you can go explore it. And maybe you're the most altruistic person in the world, but maybe I didn't tell you the whole story. That movie Avatar is a perfect example. These scientists think they're doing amazing things, but it turns out the people with the money just want to get the resources out no, of it. No, but that's not – but the question is, Trista, if you were in charge, who would you let decide these things? That's where it gets tricky, right? Let's it be does, honest. That's where it gets gray because it's I almost like, yeah. what do you consider bullying or what do you consider the limit? Like, right, but this is a When has humanity been, okay, we're better than Trish not. Trista's in charge. She's the president of the world. <laughs> right. So she gets to say whatever the F she wants. Polo for Eckhart president, Tolle. 2020. Eckhart Tolle gets to decide. So what are you, what's your thought? What's your thought on that, Chris, uh, Trista? I, you know, I... I don't know. I don't think we are in a position as That's a society. That's not the question. <laughs> the question is, holding you to it. No, He's the question to it. is, no. The I have an answer. Is, the answer is nobody currently is qualified to decide. Because everybody on this planet, in this environment, has an agenda. And that agenda is what gets us into trouble. Yeah, it, but would you say that there will always be an agenda? Right. Regardless of what the agenda is, it could be just simple survival of the human race. Right. That's an agenda on its own. Absolutely. But you're obviously yours is more of like the profit mongering and all that other stuff of, you know, how to manipulate the system. Right. We're thinking about our current system, the way it is being put on to Mars instead of getting better as a as a species. Philosophically, compassionately I and consciously before we go to Mars. I do not have the brain capacity to imagine what it would need to look like where we could do it responsibly because everybody has that agenda and the agenda is what gets us into trouble. So we have to decide either we go and the consequences be damned or we don't go and we protect the rest of the universe from our missteps. So, so from your perspective, the human race is a viral destructive species that if allowed to escape the earth will destroy the universe. Yes. <laughs> You're laughing like you think I'm kidding. Well, and what's messed up is that his microphone's on mute and he, you picked up his laugh on my mic. <laughs> <laughs> That's how loud it was. <laughs> I'm just going to say, Trista, don't get me wrong. Like, Deep down, it sounds like our podcast is very is trying to be uplifting and inspirational, but I'm a fucking nihilist <laughs> to the core. Like I even tweeted that yesterday. I think I included Chris in the tweet. It was like, I'm a nihilist. Watch us, because we want everything to burn. I didn't read that but, you said nihilist. But um, are you kind of looking at humanity as a nihilistic thing, Trista? Or is it or do you still have hope? I mean, is there hope for you? No. Yes, of course way? there's hope. Okay. Because we have got we have improved yes, of course in general, hope. right? Okay, Absolutely. Cool. But we shoot people who are trying to make things better, right? It, you know, we we aren't but, but, trustworthy to do the right thing but, but, as a society. But, but the, you're, you're ascribing to the entire population the actions of the worst individuals. No, I'm, I'm sa saying the people in charge who are money driven, yeah. who well, are politically some, driven. And some of them are, those the, are the people that are going to be making and, the and, decisions. And some of those are the worst individuals. But I'm saying that it is possible that the good motives gain the upper hand and that it can be run 
in a, uh, a ultimately uh, right-minded, productive, and careful approach. And what I'm saying is, one, we would screw it up without even realizing it and say, oh, sorry, we didn't mean it to come out like this. We had no idea what was going to happen. And that we... But, but if we never experiment, we never learn. And so if we move to Mars and find mistakes we made there, we learn how to avoid those mistakes on the next place that we explore. Right. And so we're just going to so leave the moon trail be our of trial? planets in our wake <laughs> that it's too bad it didn't work out for that one. But boy, there's just so many more out there that we can try. And every planet that we attack, every planet that we invade, conquer, every planet that we expand to, we run the risk of arresting what was naturally going to happen there if we let them alone to have their own experience. That's a good point. We're like I, the I was... Borg. <laughs> well, hang on. Okay. Assimilation. No, we're not like the Borg because eventually in Trista's universal world that she's describing, we are going to run into some bad mother truckers and they're going to trace us back to our little planet and then peace out. And who says they have? And if we have effectively diversified the location, the uh, home planet of our species, we have a better chance of surviving an attack. That's, like that, that is true. But I also think that we're also then thinned out in two places and can be attacked easier. Oh, look at that. I mean, Boom. I think no, I'm just that kidding. at the bottom line, you know, Russell, you're about expansion and survival, which is the human race's, you know, goal, ultimately. And I'm about, we need to learn how to treat each other. And we need to learn how to be responsible for our actions and we are not currently. But I'm not. But I'm not against saying that is also one of our goals. And the, the, um, you know, a, a effective, you know, self sufficient uh, colony on Mars is, you know, decades or hundreds of years away. And and so to think that you know we're going to just throw a switch and you know uh, have a whole bunch of people just show up there and, and take over, it's not going to be that easy. And so it's going to be a long process, and it's going to give us plenty of opportunities to learn how to do it right. At the potential detriment of anything that could have been created there, we just left them alone. Okay, so Trista, if you had to establish a Mars committee of five people to decide whether this trip is a go or no go, would you be like a Buddhist monk? Joe Rogan. Not Joe Rogan. <laughs> no, uh, come Rogan. on. No, shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> I like him. Okay, a Buddhist monk, say Keanu Reeves. <laughs> um, no, I want Ted, not Bill or whatever the other guy is. Ted, Theodore, Logan. Um, so that's two is Keanu Reeves. Say like a six-year-old little girl from Iowa who's just the <laughs> most innocent little creature with these little pigtails. Uh, and then I don't know the other two. So I think Iowa is one of those don't take our guns. Okay, then maybe not Iowa. Fuck. I was, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying here, girl. Okay. I know. I know. Uh, Oprah. What about Oprah? Definitely not Oprah. Um, I'm <laughs> sorry. We're gonna. Okay. Hold on. We are gonna have a conversation offline about Oprah. I don't want to. I don't want to slander too much because we we might get a cease and desist from last. <laughs> So <laughs> we will not get a cease. And no, desist. we won't. So no, there's won't. three. So who, what other two people, obviously I can't do a priest because I can't. Um, I so wouldn't I, think a priest would be a good idea anyway. I, I would love agenda. to have somebody who else is, who else is like pure of heart and, and is about love and kindness and, and hope and generosity. Eckhart Tolle. Okay. That's number four. But he only lives in the now. He doesn't actually plan. <laughs> He can't. He can't get the but Mars because he he's living in the now all the time. But he wants the he best for the human it. race, right? Yeah, but he wants the best possible human race. I, I don't disagree with that. I was okay. just making a joke five? about living in the now. Trista. Yeah, no, I got. Jeez. I laughed. I laughed. I laughed. You go look back at the thingy. I laughed. Who's number five? Oh, I do see a little <laughs> bit of a. Yeah, we need sorry, the tiebreaker, right? And on the Trista Council of Mars. Well, nobody on this this council is. Any kind of scientist is actually going to review the facts and details to see. Right, but Trista isn't something. a scientific yeah, argument. Right, this is an emotional. Well, but argument. I don't Trista's... think we should exclude the science. See, because well, no, no, you're but, looking but, at a committee of people, it's not one person. But there the are two things here. Two things here, right? One is the philo philosophy of actually going. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then the other parts, the logistics of going. Which is my next question. These are two that's very different things. We haven't even gotten eight. to logistics yet. Right. And right. that's the one I definitely want to talk about. But I, I'm really interested in the philosophy because we have four very different philosophies on this, I think. That's right. And there's only four of us on, on this. Yeah. That's deep. Agreed. That is deep. I'm good at math. The math. <laughs> so, may I ask this question? No, we need the oh. fifth person on the committee. We do. Elon we do Musk. Need a oh, wait, space backs. Shit. Oh, no, Bill Gates. Right? He can give oh, vaccines no. to the no, microbes. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I'm not a fan little, of Bill Gates. Little, I, I know. It's a ju- guys, it's a, it's a guys, little, 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 little like, tiny. We, we shit on everyone on it's this It's a little, thing, little, so, little tiny you know, vaccine. <laughs> it's a micro vaccine. So, so philosophically speaking, then, if I may, Russell, I'm going to come back to you real quickly because philosophically speaking, is it is is Mars the, the thought for you because of the atmosphere and the thought that we could possibly terraform? Because the moon has one-sixth the gravity, and we could probably launch from there and do a lot more things on the moon, for example, that is not on the Earth, than as, as well as we could on Mars. Well, as I understand it, the, um, the low gravity on the moon would make it more difficult for humans to survive uh, any extended period of time because – you know, their body needs so much you know, gravity just to, just to be healthy. Good and, point. But would not generations adapt to that as, as evolution happens, right? We would uh, have thinner created, bone created, structure. We couldn't come back to earth, for example, yeah, yeah, but you we could stay people, Generation people who couldn't return to earth. Correct. Uh, Mars, I, as I understand it, it's, it's only 38%. Gravity. It's only 38% of earth. So it's yeah, about it's low, a third. Yeah, It's 40%. lower gravity, but I think that uh, is probably in the zone of where, you know, humans might be able to, be, be adapting okay but i mean that's one of the things they got to figure out uh maybe yeah. they uh have to sleep in a centrifuge to make sure their bones don't uh, uh weaken or something like that it's that's, a very good point that's weird but but i guess i'm i'm talking philosophically right let's just talk philosophically is it is it more you added some of the logistics to it right the gravity p- portion and there is a little bit more of a i guess a confidence that we can terraform mars because of it already has a thin even though it's a thin atmosphere there is some is well, that you know, part have, of it as well? I have all kinds of ideas what they could do. They could, uh, uh, you know, land some comets on it to uh, um, bring more more water to the surface. And uh, sure, they could. Uh, there's a, uh, somebody had a study on building a uh, magnetic shield that would orbit between the sun and the Mars to reduce the uh, solar wind, so that it would uh, keep more of its atmosphere. And you know, all kinds of things they could do to uh, to start the process of terraforming and making it warmer, making it more habitable for those poor microbes who've been frozen in the poles for millions of years. Did you that say land a, aggressive? Do you say land a comet on it? Yeah. How, how, you how, steer a comet. How do you capture a comet and then you, slow you, it down? You, no, you, you slam you, it into the. Yeah, you, you slam you, it. You in. direct them. You okay, direct so them. you're. I was like. Yeah, I we're not already slamming things. Into <laughs> the planet. I, I we haven't even gone yet. I, I literally in my head Trista, pictured I, Trista, somehow you are crawling out of your skin right now. I love this. <laughs> in my head, I, I pictured somehow, you know, like some space shuttles flying next to the comet and then directing <laughs> no. it and landing it on the surface. No, no, of we're talking about violent impact, violent big, impact. Big, big, impact. Crater. <laughs> big crater. Big crader. What? So why would you do that? To add water, water to the. Okay. Yeah, because. Asteroids and comets are just basically ice. Yeah, ice, ice yeah. And okay. Metal. Now I understand. Yeah, I just, you'd actually add resources. Yeah. No. Okay. Now. Yeah, I so, just adding resources. so the fi- so right now we're talking philosophical. I think we've kind of agreed that we're all just going to disagree philosophically. Yes. So let's go past that. Let's go to the logistics because I think we can talk a little bit more, uh, probably less emotional about. And this the, is where Trista logistics. leaves the room. No, but, but, <laughs> but Trista, this she doesn't a, give a crap. crap. So any Trista, of this shit. Thank you if, for really if, getting me. Thank you. Have a great day. Peace out. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. No. Trista, if you if you got to a point where you felt humanity was going to be responsible enough, because let's be honest, the truth, the true statement is you got you're making an omelet, you got to break some eggs. That happens every any any prog any progress, any advancement, there is a detriment to the current system, right? Whatever's in place. So that is just a but isn't that just an effect of the cause of trying to improve things, right? Yes. So we just want to minimize that. Is is your point? We don't, or we want to eliminate it completely. But could we? Can we be at least honest and say that we probably couldn't eliminate every? We couldn't. We couldn't thing? eliminate okay. it completely. And you know, I I am going to come back to the philosophy and say the people who make the decisions, they're going to make or break the whole process. 
Well, humans you know? are fallible. So, so let me ask one final halfway philosophical question, then we'll, we'll get off that crap. So um, I, as much as I like that crap, since I'm the sensitive, emotional dude. In me this... too. We should go start our own podcast. <laughs> Not talk yeah. about anything logical, just philosophical and emotional. Ugh. <laughs> I hate being a Virgo. It's the freaking worst. <laughs> God, it's Pisces like, dr- here. I'm like, I got to take a nap. <laughs> exhausted so the question is trista if this is a horrible hypothetical question and you don't have to answer it um if if the if the planet decays in a certain way or there's an asteroid coming in say a thousand years or two thousand or a million and okay this is the deal everybody if we don't leave we're the human race is over and we have to go to mars at that point would you be on board No. So do you would be okay with the end of the human race? The so the, there was no like the survival of the species is gone. I don't think survival is a reason to kill something else. So the tiger that's going after the gazelle shouldn't kill the gazelle i don't watch those but that's not that i i the that the tiger is trying to eat dinner right i mean this we're not going about, to right. mars this is about dinner. we have you guys swear on here right mm. fuck yeah we yeah. have fucked up our planet so badly that we can't live here anymore so we now have to go find another planet we can start. No, the, but that's not that's not. But the no, motivation. that's not necessarily. And, and Let's the say it's an asteroid. He, the, the, the hypothetical he proposes is that in order to eat dinner, we got to go off the planet. No, he didn't. No, say to that. survive. Yeah, well, he said well, to well, survive. well, but but the you know the the tigers got to eat dinner to survive. Yeah, but that's not the question. The question was if an asteroid is coming. I mean, if an asteroid is coming, frankly, it's too late. Right, well, let's say, well, but in a couple, point, in a couple, in a couple hundred Russell, years, in a couple saying. hundred years, you know, we're going <laughs> to, I thought we the, weren't the, keeping score. This was just a conversation. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Minus one point, one demerit for Russell. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Mark stole my demerit system from three podcasts ago. High five. That was your, it, was from the last it was, was it? No, it was from my, when I did my astrological chart. Yeah, I had my chart read for an hour. That was horrible. I'm not recovered oh from that yet either. Thanks a lot, jerk. <laughs> well, your Saturn is up Uranus. No, that sounds fucking painful. So um, I guess the, that's the question is that if, if the survival of the species depends upon going to another planet, where's the deal breaker, you know? But Russell's point is valid. The tiger's trying to get dinner to survive so a b c right what is unique about humanity is we do have that ability to look forward and i think not to take russell's side because i'm not russell not at all <laughs> not even no, but but to to take fire, that point fire. i believe russell you're just saying that eventually the sun's going to die eventually yep. things are going to go away so we know this is going to happen Absolutely. so we are proactively looking for dinner yeah Absolutely. Versus a tiger whose belly's hungry and goes, I need to look for dinner now because they don't have that ability well, to instinct. constantly look ahead. Right. It's not, like in, the, yeah. right. it's not like they're hoarding their, their little, they're not going, hey, let me get this little guy and put him in yeah, a little pen and, and just eat him whenever I want. Right. Because right. that's ability. completely instinctual. I, and I understand the analogy. Well, we have a little forethought. Right. But we also don't know, like, yeah, we've got X billions of years until the sun goes supernova. I get that. However, before then, a myriad of things could happen that could end our race, our planet, and all the species on it. But we have no, no, we don't know those. We don't, Th- Those are unknowns. We correct. do know that this thing's going to happen at some point. Correct. But, so I think that we can only prepare for, you know, contingencies for unknowns, but prepare for yes, the known. Yes, of course. But I imagine in the next hundreds of years, our technology will be massively more advanced to the point where we will be able to see asteroids coming and to see other things to give us much more time 
to be prepared and make decisions like, well, shit, we got to go to Mars. You know, uh, if we want to survive, this is what we have to do. Philosophically speaking, no, here's a point that I just <laughs> thought about is this too, is we tend to love to eat the candy bar and throw the wrapper on the ground behind us. I think no, that's what that's Trista's fair. point is, correct? Yeah, Trista. We don't. So, we don't not, have not, responsibility but, for the consequences of our But not everybody. Not everybody does that. Not everybody. And I agree no, with you, Russell. Not but let, does. But let's look at the. Let's look at humanity's philosophical view. Right. We we talk about destroying the earth and we're trying to protect it. Right. When we have, it seems to me in some point, some part of the Mars thing is a smokescreen because it's like, well, we're just going to go to another planet to shit on. We don't have to worry about correcting things here because we're moving on. And a lot of people will see that as like, oh, well, I guess we don't have to worry about what we're doing to the earth because we're building a second earth. Russell doesn't think there's anything wrong with what we're doing to the earth. That's not correct. I think that we have made a lot of progress and we're doing a much better job of managing the planet than we did in the past. And uh, we have room for improvement and we need to continue that. And for you know, people to – I agree. Some people might say, oh, if we're going to Mars, I don't need to worry about the earth. But that's very short-sighted, and because of how long it will take to establish a, a you know fully self-sufficient uh, colony on Mars, you know I think it's unrealistic to think that we can just stop worrying about the Earth until we have Mars, because it's going to be so much work and so much time to get a, a Mars colony going that it, it's you know not something that is any kind of uh, excuse to say I don't need to worry about you know our, our home planet. So the question is this. Do you think that more than the majority of people are long sighted or short sighted? Because it's as a nihilist, and I'm not really, I just mess around with that term, but I would like to think that we are much more short sighted as a whole than individuals are or possible altruistic groups and things like that. Well, I would say that the modern human is much more short sighted than, you know, than the historical human. Um, because we've become so accustomed to instant gratification, microwave and, generation, right? Yeah, the, the microwave generation. You know, little, you know, little MTV, you know, short snippets. Um, but isn't that the concern? Because we're going to Mars, and now we're like, fuck it, fuck Earth. Who cares? We're going to Mars anyway. Like they don't see the time that you know it takes. Does that make sense? Do you know what I'm saying? I guess my point on that. Well, but we still do long term plans. We build highways and bridges and. You know, there, there are projects that take, you know, 15, 20 years to complete. And so, you know, the idea of something that is going to take a while to be done is still not beyond, you know, the the, the normal operations of what we're doing today. Um, you know, I, I'm agreeing that, yeah, a lot of people are uh, a little bit, you know, short-sighted in their, you know, daily uh, expectations, but simply because they're spoiled. Because you or, know, or distracted too, right? I mean, yeah. we're being pulled, we're having the wool pulled over our eyes in a lot of different ways also absolutely and we're in a society at least here in the u.s where it's so hard to make ends meet so hard to pay your bills and keep your job and make sure you don't lose your house and keep your car so it doesn't break down that it's like there's no more space to transform society that's a good point too uh it's kind of see, see, see i i have the reverse perspective on that <laughs> Because I think well, that, I think I think it's because you are, are who you, guys you are, married? Russell. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe I'm looking. Anybody on here single? <laughs> Whoa! Well, hey, look, isn't? But don't you guys compliment each other and not Absolutely. not? Yeah, oh, yeah. you look so nice today. You compliment each other. Oh, it's Aww. the yin and the yang. The yin and the yang. The yin we all have love here. Yang. So. So, Phil, once again, all, all, I, all I'm merely saying is it's my concern. If I were to talk on the philosophical side, it's my concern that the second humans think that there's another answer, that they stop thinking about the problems that we have. Like It's almost like yeah, the next shiny I, metal yeah, object. Yeah, of well, course. But that's back to some may. But if the, if that's not what everyone does, if not, it's not what the, the, the leadership and consensus is, it's still OK. Because, you know, okay. yeah, somebody, but somebody, even the leadership but, isn't in agreement, but somebody throws a candy wrapper behind them. And yeah, that that's a mistake. But it doesn't mean that as a whole, the, the species is condemned because one of them's a litterer. And not can, at all. I, I'm I mean, certainly not stating that, please. I hope that I'm not. 
saying that about the human human race. So um, what percentage of the people don't put their candy bar in the trash can? Yeah, who who doesn't throw their cigarette butts out the window? Well, that's, I don't I guess smoke that's anymore, so I'm good. I know we don't smoke anymore, but that's probably the best one, right? Would that be the analogy? Yeah, don't if you've smoke? ever if you've ever done any work on the side of the road picking up the garbage, that's most of what it is. Yeah. So who, it, so who's not doing that? And how many how large is that percentage to Chris's point? I mean, it's probably a pretty large percentage that aren't, although I will say I was at a like a four way intersection and a woman was making a left or right and on her way on the turn she threw out a mcdonald's bag but she didn't just throw it out she actually like dumped the whole bag and then threw it on the ground it was like a mcdonald's bag worth of garbage that she just dumped on the road in front of everybody else sitting at the red light i couldn't believe it yeah but i think she's the exception i would say oh she's the exception i would i would say but she still is a human who lives on this i would say 70 80 percent of people don't do stuff like that Wait a minute. Oh my God. I'm a genius. This is what we do. I this is it. Put me in charge. We round up all the McDonald's trash dump people and send their asses to Mars. And we fix this planet. High five me. This is genius. The whole no, we conversation have, was we I've got a better idea. Go Mars because we have people like that in society and now you want to no, send but, all but, of but, them but, to Mars. But you're but you're worried about how Earth is not again. I like this because Earth is not That's just Earth. Earth. Let's Let's fix Earth, Earth, Earth and send no. the assholes to Mars. No, because then we've taken Get away Mars's Mars. opportunity to evolve. You know, they did try this what, they did try this and they ended up with Australia. So you got to be careful. <laughs> yes. Well, there was a comedian who said, why don't we see if tinfoil works as an astronaut suit? Just take homeless people, <laughs> throw some Reynolds wrap around them and just shoot them up there and see what happens. Is that Russia? Not the worst thing. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> totally kidding, everybody. Totally kidding. But but yeah, they're, they're very good points here. The, the thing about that is Australia, like, do you think hilarious. it's 70, 80 percent that <laughs> that are non cigarette like if i were smoking do you think 70 percent didn't throw their cigarette butts out of the window i feel like that's a low number i at least half i would say half all right well, well i go to half. i i i'm i guess you know not being a smoker i don't i don't know i mean i think uh, you're probably right i don't recall being in a car that has a used an ashtray that's been used <laughs> In, in oh yeah, twenty, 20 yeah, years true. easily. Good point. Or an airplane. Uh, in, in fact, right. they don't even make they don't even make ashtrays in cars anymore. I, right. I think. It's, it's crazy, like a, right? It's yeah. like an option. So you're probably right. Most smokers probably do that. But with respect respect to the rest of the garbage, which is the more unsightly stuff, all those cigarette butts, they don't ever rot. They're they're fiberglass, so they they're right. they're they're that, there. Yeah, they they just don't go away. They're so there Russell, somebody who, picks them up. But I would who say would that, be your group? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I, was, I mean, the the people who are, you know, actually actively concerned about not ruining their environment, I think is the large majority of the population. I think, you know. I think that we don't want to ruin it as long as it's not inconvenient to us. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, That's exactly I, yeah, I, what I think as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a varying scale. The more, you know, the farther you have to walk to recycle something, the, the less likely you are to do it. Right. And, and, What's interesting and, about that too, Russell, I, where, I don't want to put any. Have given up on recycling? We're we're overflowing with it. Yeah, I mean we've got they're a giving, trash island that's all they've plastic given up too. On recycling, they, they're saying it's too expensive. It doesn't really work. It's not making a difference. There are places that you go, you can't even recycle now. You're just supposed to throw it in the garbage. That's why you make everything with hemp oil, everybody. But that's a whole <laughs> other conversation. I think we need to move on to the logistics. Yeah, of so Mars, we're gonna, please. so we got the philosophical stuff. I think I think we nailed that down because I don't know anything about the logistics of Mars. So I would like to be educated. Yes. So, Russell, you so obviously suddenly, study on this, right? Well, I mean, I've, I've read... Uh, I've Wait read... a minute. Before we go there, I just have to make a pause before we go there because I don't know who it was. Mark, maybe it was you that asked who Russell's five people would be. I'm yes. on the edge of my seat. Oh, oh shit. Go ahead. So we are going to get Russell's five. And then we'll move forward. Is, is this all agreed? Well, I mean, there's really not much of a question. It's pretty anybody in favor of doing it. I'm 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 going to put on the list. So Elon Musk. Well, who do you find responsible? But who would you who oh, but five see, people that you feel responsible, responsible or that were? No, do you that's see what not I'm what he said. He said people who I agree know. with him. That's what he said. Well, agree with going. I think is what yeah. he said. Yeah, but I think way, the way we go is important go. whether we go or not. He wants them no because he said people who think we should go, but he really means people who think we should go and do our best and be sorry if we mess it up. Right. I'm, so I'm are there five people on this planet? I'm not going to. Is Elon that. one of them? 
he's not going to dispute what I just said. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Elon is definitely one who wants to. He wants to. To, to colonize Mars. And he's yeah, because it's only his rocket that he's selling to actually get there so that he has no vested interest whatsoever. Yeah. No, um, and I, look, trust me, I like Elon. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, like, let's be honest. It's his company that's going to get us there, right? So he has a direct vested interest in Mars. Yeah, I mean, definitely is, is one of the pathways that could be pulled off. I have no idea if what he's doing is going to work. I mean, he's got, uh, I think, something of a, uh, a Hail Mary approach to it, rather rather a, you know, a, a, a this better work, you know, kind of kind of approach, and so hopefully, uh, you know. Have you ever out. heard that story on his uh, on his rockets? So he was doing the test launches, or the, and he was on the last one that didn't work, and he said if one more failed, he they they were going to shut it down, and they got that He's last one to, to land vertically uh, on yep. the on the dock or whatever. It's pretty interesting. So now let's, so we'll get to logistics. So no, anybody, no, 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 no. Wait, no, no. Are, are we going to hold him to the fire? Are we going to hold him to five names? Yes. All right, Russell, five names, sir. Jesus. <laughs> maybe Jesus is on the council. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, I mean, I really, I really hadn't thought of it. I don't know if I come up with five, but, uh, okay. you know, I mean, there, there certainly are some, some top NASA scientists. I would definitely want somebody on there who is an expert at uh, detecting uh, in reviewing the data and, and detecting it, there there is any life there, or, or that, that we're not going to do anything to harm it if we find anything. Um, I definitely want you know some of the top scientists and that kind of stuff. Um, so at the core, philosophically, Teresa is much more philosophical about the why. You are just more about the physical, right? Like evolution, propagating the species, survival, protecting the species. Yeah, Dude, protecting species. Okay, he didn't sure. answer the question. Mark, he's going to come up with five up. people later. He said he didn't think about it. We're not going to have dead air while he's thinking for five people about five I people. So, Russell, basically, your committee is Elon Musk and the top NASA scientists, correct? Basically, yep. And Keanu Reeves. Okay. okay yeah, well, uh, Keanu, uh, obviously. Keanu you know. Reeves' dog from John Wick. <laughs> yes. All of, yes. And John Wick. Okay, perfect. Okay. <laughs> now we can move on to the logistics. Now we can move on. But I will so say, I've Mark, been, you, you, oh. I just wanted to say you really encapsulated our relationship so perfectly mm -hmm. in that one line that I'm philosophical and he's pragmatic and logistical. That is like our whole relationship. You didn't know that Mark is a marriage counselor, did you? <laughs> no. It's well, think, amazing. Well, Wait till you see my invoice in the mail, ladies and gentlemen. Anything. It's like $54. I'm going to give you guys a bill. We're, we're an hour in. Our hour, it looks like our hour's up. <laughs> <laughs> um well to that point though too so russell i i i don't know you from adam but i know people very well and i can tell that you well i don't want to speak for you but my opinion of you is that you are a personally responsible per, you are personally responsible for everything you do you hold yourself accountable to everything is that correct i would say so yeah i think that's why you see that in others and my concern well, is I expect I, it in others and I don't yeah, expect it. That's a good point. That's a good point. My concern is the reality of that is that people have less of the personal accountability in today's philosophical world than we may have had prior. Right. It's kind of diminishing. And maybe and that's, that's concerning to some point we've let them. Oh, yes. Oh, and we've let ourselves let them. Right. Like we've let ourselves down. Yeah, the lack of accountability, that's rampant. Right. And and what's even worse is like it starts with personal accountability. Well, yeah, and then it but, works outward to holding well, others of course, accountable. But like right? I mean, just just in the workplace, how the blame game. Yeah, well, like how managers and directors and senior directors don't hold their people accountable, and that's a horrible example. Let's move on to the logistics okay, of Mars. Logistics. Go. Uh, who's who's going to talk about how we get there and how how this is going to work? And how I've got a lot of obstacles to throw in people's way. Well, the, the current plan that, that I've seen floated is that you send a bunch of robots ahead of time, including um, machines that process the Martian atmosphere and make rocket fuel out of it. So they, they, they uh, suck the carbon dioxide out of a, what's there and use either a, a solar or a, a nuclear power source to uh, break it down and make rocket fuel out of it. Um, there's actually a lab on the, 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 the uh, Explorer that's on its way there right now um that's got a uh, a device to test that process to see if they can definitely do it 
And so uh, once they set up this, the uh, kind of robot base uh, that's there and has some fuel and supplies, then you land the human astronauts to live in it and you continue to expand it by adding modules and so forth. And so that's the, the short-term plan for building a base. What would the rocket fuel be used for? Well, the rocket fuel would be used to get back off Mars. So you get the would... humans back off. Yeah. So okay. that way it's much cheaper to uh, land on the planet. You don't need to take all the return resources with you. Okay. And so if you can use the resources that are there, um, then you don't, then to, to uh, come back home, you don't need to carry it all with you on every single trip. When you talk about resources, are you looking, Russell, to keep the resources on Mars? Or are you looking for those resources possibly to even come back to Earth to be used? Say, for example, they find this uh, mountain full of lithium, right? And we love that. We love our batteries nowadays. Well, and well, I, think, I think that would be more productive to be used in manufacturing on Mars for use on Mars if they find stuff like that because of the cost of bringing it back. If you were trying to find materials for use on Earth, you'd be much better off finding an asteroid that doesn't have a gravity well that's you know, got it trapped so you more easily bring it from that asteroid back to earth yeah i agree with that and i actually had some thoughts about mining that that came into mind because obviously we're we're in a world that i know we have the quantum world but we do have newtonian physics right everything's in orbit and its mass are the same i'm curious if they mined and took mass off of an, a celestial body how that would affect its orbit if it would maybe be not mass enough to be flung away you know, almost it's, like slingshot out uh, It'll stay in the same orbit because it's going to be stable. However, all the planets are currently in a um, kind of a uh, stasis where, you know, they're, they're in a rhythm where the Earth and the Mars and Jupiter all kind of go in, in a certain pattern. Right. And so if you dramatically change the mass of one of them, you would mess up that uh, balance they're in. Yeah, that balance. Right. And That's so my concern, could, actually. It could potentially screw up the orbits, but that would not be something that would happen in the in matters of hundreds of years, it would have something happen in, million, in terms of millions of years. Right, but the sun's not going to burn out for billions. So we're That's already true. looking ahead, right, to the sun's extinction to keep the uh, humans alive, right, or keep yeah. the species protected. So that's the thing about mining like the moon. I always thought that would change the gravity and that would affect some kind of orbit with its tidal locking and all that stuff. But I don't know if that's truth or not. So, Well, I mean, there's all kinds of things that, that we've done that have screwed things up. When they filled up the uh, Three Gorges Dam in China, they had to adjust the atomic clocks on the GPS because it ever so slightly changed the rotation of the Earth. Yeah. Wow. The rotation of the Earth and obviously uh, elevation as well, right? We find that, for, you know, gravity well, well, plays well, a direct role in time, time and, you know, time well, space. That's, that's, well, the gravity is going to be the same because the water is still on the Earth because the distance from the Earth, the moon is quite, is, is quite right. hard. But uh, it's like a um, an ice skater, you know, putting their arms out when they're spinning. Yeah, the centrifugal oh, force. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and, or is that what it is? The centrifugal, right? When you yeah, put yeah. your arms out? And, yeah, tighten well, it up, When, when so. they fill, fill up the reservoir, more mass is higher up. Right. Yeah. My thought was I, I was thinking elevation as much as I was mass. So I apologize. I, just, I guess it would be like building a mountain would have. I thought you were a physicist. I have physics. I'm physics adjacent. Okay. <laughs> Marriage well, counselor, I, I physics. If you were to move a whole bunch of, of, of soil from the deep bottom of the oceans and build a giant mountain, you could screw the earth up in, in terms of rotation and balance too. Let's, right. let's start getting on that. I'm yeah, gonna, you know, I see, am a geologist in my spare time. Sure. Trish is going to be opposed to that pro project. But wait, <laughs> wait I'm I, geologist adjacent. I know I, how to I'm do I'm a this. geologist and I have a caterpillar, so I, I'm on it. <laughs> or a capitular, however you want to say it. So how long does it take to get to Mars? Um, Just under a year, about no, eight, no, seven no, to the, the, ten the months. Rocket, it depends. You, you got to do it at a certain time. The rockets had just, just launched last month. Right, it's going to get there January, February. It's seven months, seven, yeah. eight months. Yeah, it's less than a year but for sure. That's, you got there's only certain windows to do it because it's based on when the, with the correct has to do with the orbit. Orbit and the return trip is about two years though. It's a different. It's it's no, no, inverse, it's a, right? It's a, it's a similar. I heard it was. Uh, oh, I watched something yesterday, but I'll I'll table that. Well, no, you could essentially the same course you do with the two planets in sync would work on a return trip. It'd be about you the have same to way. wait though, right? Yeah time yes yeah, so you'd be you'd be there for a year and a half until they line up again to, for the okay return. okay right but you'd have to shoot it out so that the earth goes faster and catches up to you yeah you well, to, the, like, big, shoot it. The, the big concern is that it's difficult to uh to resupply 
people who are there. That's why you need to make sure everything's there ahead of time. Right. So, so you're talking about automation now, is it automation with a, uh, like a skeleton crew to make sure things are operating properly for maintenance, just to make sure that the machines are doing what we're telling them to do and all that, or how it would be is remote, it just automated? Fully remote control machines until they have enough of a base established that can support the humans when they get there. Because you have how, to be sure. That, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You need to be sure the humans can be supported for that time time period where they're waiting for that return window. Or how far think, are we along to get that? to make all those machines that can do all of those things, do uh, we think? Well, I mean, I kind of look, look back to the, the, the space program that went to, to the moon. The technology is all there. Um, you know, maybe something hasn't been optimized and, and gotten to the best version, but it's just a matter of being commitment to do it. And so if the commitment to do it is there, you know, we could do it in the next few years. But uh, the shortcoming is the commitment is waffling. You know, like some... Uh, presidents and NASA administrators are all for it. And then the next one comes in and they change, they, they change the budget and back off on it. And so, you know, Mars has been, you know, on the, uh, the agenda and off the agenda for 30 years. Um, okay. And, you know, that's, what's nice about someone like Musk talking about it is that, you know, he's, you know, not about to get voted out of office and change his, change his plan, but he also doesn't have the resources of an entire U S government. And so, yeah, and he could also have China give him just a penny more than the United States does and change his mind altogether, right? Like, let's let's not kid ourselves. It's there that possibility. Yeah. Or Russia, or, or Russia, or anybody. Or, right. Well, China's China's the one that's up and coming, right? Well, We're, besides the fact the guy can sell a million more trucks and he can go there by himself if he wanted to. Yeah. Eventually, that I don't see that as out of the possibility. His big money maker is going to be the internet. You know, with the sure. Starlink, the Starlink project. You know about oh, that. yeah, for right. sure. And Neuralink, I mean, his thing with Neuralink is on, like all of his endeavors are pretty amazing. Well, I mean, let's well, not get ourselves. Basically, either Lex Luthor or um, Tony Stark. I'm just not sure which. Yeah, we're we're not sure. Um, Lex or Stark. he's just like a yeah, he's that. He's, he's Iron Man. Flick. I don't know. One of the Whoa. other bad guys. So the first human launch, Russell, would be how many people? I don't know. I'd have to uh, see what they're talking about. Probably a, a small crew, three or five. four. I think. Yeah. I think you probably five or six. You want you want some backup in case somebody you know has medical challenges or something like that. Well, the dragon, the dragon that launched the two gentlemen up earlier was said that they have a capsule that can do four. I think right? Don't they have one for four? So maybe they send two up, and then they got to live in. They have to live in that spacecraft for seven months on the way there, and then live on Mars for a year and a half at least, and yeah. then live on the spacecraft for another seven months back. Something like that's, that. That's poopy. Yeah, it's a commitment. <laughs> uh, but there are lots of people who will sign up for that today. I, I agree. I, I don't disagree that there's somebody who's wanting to do that. You know who doesn't want to do that is Trista. <laughs> Trista Polo. She's like, I, okay, first of all, there's microbes, bro. Second of all. <laughs> well, uh, the other thing is us bringing microbes micro there. Bro. We I could bring. Don't forget hashtag. our contamination. That's right. I want that to be the hashtag for this episode. Hashtag microbes, bro. Hell yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to do that. We're going we're gonna to make that happen. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> and and I, I totally get the logistics of that. See, the thing for me is this. I, I agree about the, I guess, propagation of the species or continuing the human survival, bro. Survival. Yeah. Well, I would My say point is... All, all the life on our planet, we could could be the life for Noah. all of it. I knew it. I knew, oh. the, I knew the arc was coming. The arc. <laughs> I knew Sons it. Sons of bitches. Hashtag arc. I'm just kidding. Hashtag arc. <laughs> what flood? What Hashtag what flood? The deluge. Hashtag it's drizzling. Stop with the pound sign, dude. <laughs> okay. You know I'm a phone guy. It's I a was pound Trista's sign. fault. She's the one who said it. I did. But only once you sort of that's beat true. it. To death. But you yeah, I, well, that's what I do. Yeah, we beat a lot of things. I, I take a dead horse and then I revive it with the paddle things. And then you beat it. And to then death. beat it again. And beat it to death again. Yeah, <laughs> that's just mean. That's just cruel. See, that is cruel. See, I should not go to Mars. I, agree I would just with beat that. their horses. You should just go to <laughs> Australia with the other criminals. <laughs> You're off the, you off the committee. I'm off the committee. Oh, See, no. I, thank you. Thank you for not giving me that burden of having to live with that. <laughs> now you're on a subcommittee, and. This, these are the other things too. Like things that I've been thinking about is I. It's my opinion if we can terraform it, if we really knew that we can make the atmosphere breathable for humans, that's one thing. I don't 
know if we're able to do that. Just get And I don't know if we'll ever get that technology. But I do believe in the moon. And the reason I think the moon is because of the lower, like we're talking about launching and getting away in case something bad was coming to Earth, for example. It'd be hard to have an asteroid hit the Earth and an ELE on the moon. Unless so we do you watch that, that one movie where it happened. Is it deep, uh, not the deep, deep one end, or the, the Armageddon? Uh, the Armageddon. The Armageddon one? Yeah. America's really pro moon. <laughs> yeah, I'm really pro moon because I know there's nothing there. And it's actually not, it's actually a spaceship, guys. I don't know if you Except know that. for the Transformers. But only if you put your tinfoil hat on. Only if you put your tinfoil hat on. Um, I mean, I think, I think the mean, the moon has, um, has value as a stepping point. Um, you know, that, that, uh, if you were to put manufacturing on it, it's much easier to put things in orbit in the moon and send them off on longer, right. longer trip than it would be to do it from Earth's surface. Is it the resources that you think Mars has or that they do have that makes it advantageous to be Mars over something like another just orbiting body of, you know, like the moon? Well, the other one that's interesting is Venus. Yes. And the thing that's cool about Venus is you could literally build floating cities on Venus. What? It's such a thick, it's like a thick. Because of the atmosphere? Yep. Wow. But it's like eight gazillion degrees, right? surface yeah well that's true so you float up in the cloud but you're being irradiated constantly because of the closeness of the cosmic rays when you think you need another ratio Uh, for that too right i think venus does not have because the earth is protected protects us with its magnetic field yes and mars doesn't have one and i think venus doesn't either and so um without the without those um there's a lot a lot of um you know, you have to find contingencies to deal with that. But, you know, maybe we'll find way, ways that we can survive better in, in, in those environments. And maybe we'll simply evolve into a species that isn't as bothered by them because there are already cockroaches and things that don't seem to bother, bother at all about radiation. Yeah, the cockroaches obviously wired differently than we are. I mean, evolution for us would take. We're not, we don't have that exoskeleton. We also have logic and thought. and Well, we also don't need our spleens anymore. Oh, yeah. Or appendix, or tons, tonsils. That's true. So we're already, we've already, we've already started to evolve. We just don't. We're not cockroaches yet. It's also assuming <laughs> we needed them in the first place. Ugh, gross. <clears throat> Let's go back to the logistics. So, are they these four people that are going to be in space forever? Are they going to grow food on Mars? Oh, are they, they have to, yeah. in their poop? Didn't you see that movie? Oh, yeah, dear Lord, should... with the poop. Okay, so good soundtrack, yeah. by the way. It's a good soundtrack, isn't it? The Martian one? Because it's like through the tape of the person who was his commanding officer at some point. Yeah, it's a bunch of 1970s disco music. Yeah. It's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so, Russell, could you seriously answer the damn question? (laughs) How do we grow food? So are they, what's, how are they going to live, bro? Well, well, you'd have to grow food in in greenhouses until you have more air okay. pressure. So, you have like a like a sports dome, uh, you know, to contain your farm. So, you so they're going to have a greenhouse, or multiple. Uh, and so and they're going to bring seeds with them for 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 vegetables and. Yeah, whatever. whatever I mean, I'm certain they'll probably do some studies with robotics to see what they can make grow. Okay. Uh, beforehand. I do have a point about that. Uh, one of my one of the things I came across with the soil issue is the amount of perchlorates that are in the soil in Mars. Amount of and what? It's chlorine. It's basically chlorine in the soil, so you can't grow shit. Okay. Yeah, and you also need has, phosphorus too, I would think, right? Because that's has, what helped grow. Well, it has to be washed. You, know, you have to wash the soil. You have to make it habitable for, for our planets. I mean, this is the first step in the terraforming. I mean, you have to terraform. Yeah small little plot of land that you can so you can grow on it it also doesn't have any of the microbes and things that our soil has because you know our plants and and bacteria evolve together so right. you have to bring enough of that to to uh you know start your your greenhouse so okay it's not going to be easy but but well right you know, I, how confident are you that it's successful though because we had a little experiment called biosphere that well, we happen to live within a 45 minutes of yeah and we've driven by there multiple times. I remember going by there and yeah. checking it out. And well, that. Yeah, apparently did not do well. Yeah, it didn't do well. That's my one of the concerns for sure. Well, but I guarantee you that they will have problems. I guarantee you that they will have failures. Absolutely. Um, that, yeah. You know, that, that that's that has to be expected. 
um, the question. I love your conviction because you're steadfastly saying, you know, that this is going to be a shit show, but you're still going forward because of the, what it, what it will mean for humanity as a whole going forward. Yeah. I like that. What, how do you feel about that philosophy? Uh, Trista? I am completely in opposition of it. <laughs> okay. I like Regardless that. of the shit showness, I still oppose it. <laughs> <laughs> because of the shit show itness, I that proves that I have a very valid stance. I like I I look, everyone's opinions are valid. They're all valid cuz these of are I'm willing to be married to this guy, right? I'm to share well, coming yeah. from compassion is is just as is just as smart as coming from logic because it's a smart in a different way. That's right. right? It's Emotional an intelligence and- in a different way. But okay, so here's a question: We had we go into the moon, right? The moon had an in- incident where they filled the capsule up with oxygen and it blew up and killed. What three people in yes. a fire? Gus Christian. How many? What's yeah, what do you think the sacrifice is worth, Russell? Like how? Say we did three failed attempts on Mars. Like we don't hear back from these people. They just they just go off the grid and they totally disappear. How many's? I mean, do we just keep doing it and doing it and just expecting the risk and all that? Well, I mean, you figure out what went wrong, and you don't make that mistake again. Um, and yeah, you keep trying. Um, yeah, it just seems to be a long time between trials and errors, right? So it really would make that a long, longer process even than we think. So the foresightedness has to be even greater than what we currently have even about it. How much of the human race would have to be – how much of the human race are you willing to sacrifice to, quote, do this to save the human race? Like what's an acceptable amount of loss, what percentage of all of it? makes it worth saving the rest of them. Well, I don't look at it that way. I look at But that was part of your argument. But I look at you know progress has risks. Um But I mean, your argument was it's a survival to save the human race. How much of the human race are you willing to sacrifice to save the human race? What's the acceptable amount like, oh, well, if it's more than that, it's not worth it and we should try something else. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't agree with the question, but I mean, I would. But I'm demanding you answer it anyway. <laughs> How can you not well, agree with the question? Well, because, because I mean, I. It's kind of loaded, but I get, I get the, I get the point of the question, and I get I mean, the point of him it, not. I would not accept a huge. You know, if you're going to lose ten percent doing this, that's ridiculous. I mean, that that's that. You know, obviously, you're doing it wrong, and so um, you have to strive to avoid loss of life. Um, you know, in the entire endeavor, but know that something might go wrong. Somebody might open an airlock in the wrong way. And, and, you know, and as a result, you know, they kill a crew. I mean, it's not, I, I, I'm, I'm not willing to say that because that, I mean, when they lost the first crew on, on the Apollo one, they didn't say, okay, that's it. We're not going to the moon. They said, well, let's figure out. Yeah. But they we were also up. going against Russia. I mean, that's a little, that was, there was a lot of a race there but, going but, on. But the attitude was, let's figure out what we did wrong. And let's fix it and not make that mistake again. And so, I mean, I'm not saying that I want people to die, but I'm saying if somebody is is lost or seriously injured, you figure out what you did wrong, you don't do it again. And this is where some of the challenge comes in because, to, Trista, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but as a compassionate person, one life is too many, right? To To your point? Although earlier in this conversation, I did say I would sacrifice the whole human race to avoid going to Mars. So, I mean. And Russell, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> that was a low point for me in the conversation. <laughs> so, so when are you guys flying to Vegas to get a quickie divorce? <laughs> and you guys want us to meet you there? We could... <laughs> We've been through way more than this conversation. No. Uh, this has been great. And I really love it. I, I, I do. Ha- I mean, there are other concerns. though. So. Russell, limited resources. We have a hundred points that of resources that we can do. How many points do we put on Mars? And how many points do we put on trying to help bring Earth back or wind the clock back on Earth by cleaning up efforts and some things like that? What about automation here? Can we do both at the same time? I don't feel like we can. I feel like you, you it's one or the other in a way. Absolutely do both at the same time. 
and there's going to be cross benefits. I mean, they went to the moon and they they brought us you know, Velcro and Teflon. We got you know, and, and Tang, and, and, and Tang and, and computer, <laughs> but, but you know things that made it better for everyone because the technology was developed from it. And if they find better ways to to farm or or you know better ways to process chemicals in the process of of, of uh, setting up bases on Mars, those technologies could benefit all of us here. I mean, maybe, maybe maybe better recycling technologies that make it more practical to do recycling in a way that's not practical now could could benefit us all. And so I think it's it's uh, short sighted to think that uh, we're not going to have all of us benefit from uh, the the program. And so that you want to you know kind of keep all the the, the burners going and and uh, work on all fronts. I'm not saying you know stop cleaning up the environment. I'm not saying stop working out for, you know, better ways to, to handle garbage and keep the oceans clean, but at the same time, keep looking forward and expand. Okay. But yeah. I really do want to hear an answer to the question. You have a hundred points. What's the breakdown? Well, you got to make a bigger pie first. I mean, why are we limited to a hundred points? There's well, I mean, you could do point one. Well, you can, you can keep fractionalizing. Are you talking the, budgetary? I mean, is yeah, that like, you a, mean? like a global, we have a global resource budget. You mean monetary? For, well, it's monetary, but it's resource too. It's not just oh. money because it's about material and other things to make the products, right? So maybe we have to strike an agreement with Thailand to get a certain mineral to put into our spaceship. So it's right. also resource. It's not just money. Yeah, I mean, I think that we're, right? we're, 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 would be appropriate to, to spend only one or two of those points on expanding the species. The rest of it should be on maintaining and growing what we have here locally. And I think that's in line. I don't think the budget is out. I don't think money's really the issue. My concern is like, are you, do you want the United States to colonize Mars or do you want earth to colonize Mars? Because that's a, that's earth, a philosophical difference. But I want it to be, I'm sorry. Could you say that again? I think I stepped over you. I apologize. Yeah. I want earth to colonize Mars, but I don't, but with the caveat that I want it to be a, uh, uh, a conglomerate of, of uh, people that believe in free speech and thought. So I'm not too excited about the idea of China. Right. Uh, Cause let's be honest, China as a nation is just wants to exist. Right. Well, well so the Chinese people are great, but the Chinese government, not so much. Well, that's what I'm saying. The government, we're not talking about people we're talking, right. We're talking at this point, it's now above the people. It's now to the government entities making these things happen or putting uh, policies in place. Right. Yeah. So, do you think that the United States on its own can do this? Obviously, we work together with a lot of space agencies and the International Space Station and all that. But it is this space race 2.0 against China or is this we really care about Mars? Well, I mean, I think I started from the beginning that Mars is I, I'm not hiding a stepping stone to be going on to to expand to be a multi uh a multi-solar system species. And so it is a step in the process. And um, if motivation to, uh, to keep ahead of China uh, gets people, you know, fired up about it, then I'm, I'm all in support of that, that uh, uh, tactic, if you will, that game. But, um, you know, I think it really should be something that we, we are all motivated to do because it is good for us as a whole. And I don't think you guys should do it alone. I think you should do it in cooperation with other, uh, nations that are, as I said, you know, in, in, in favor of free thought and exchange of ideas. Yeah. Sam Harris had a really interesting point. Are you familiar with Sam Harris by any chance, a neuropsychologist or neuroscientist? I, the name rings a bell, but I'm not able to connect it. He's one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, apparently, with uh, da Excellent. Daniel Dennett and uh, Christopher Hitchens and Dawkins. So Richard Dawkins, if you're familiar with them, but he actually, you know, one of the challenges of this is we either don't have the foresight time wise, right? We have different president every four years, different Senator every six and different Congress every two. We either don't have the time problem or we have a boundary problem where we don't have enough of the resources, right? This does feel like it needs to be a global effort versus a country effort. Absolutely. Well, it's, it spreads the cost, but I think that the, the technology and the resources exist. It's a matter of the, the short, the thing it's in short supply is the will and motivation. That's, that's, I, I think that we do have a lot of the technology, but some of the materials we don't have yet to create in some cases. Now, obviously we're getting better with material like composites and things like that. But in the beginning, you know, we have ideas where we like computer, the idea of a computer has been around forever, but it, we weren't able to make it work. Right. The actual, pieces right. to and make it was, a computer. And it wasn't until there was a 
a global war until they needed to, you know, to compute uh, ballistic charts to really get the motivation to build computers. And- yeah, war. I mean, obviously, out of war, we've had a lot of, I hate to say progress, but we've gotten a lot of technological it's advancements true. out of it. It's true. So we've covered that. So we think we can do this is what we're saying. And Trista says, no. I didn't say we can't. I said we shouldn't. <laughs> right. I said we can, but Trista says, no, don't do it, is what so, I meant. Yeah, absolutely. We can, and yet I do not believe we should. Have you done any protesting? <laughs> like, you know, no, near the... the first time I'm ever having this conversation with people other than Russell. And clearly, like down in... because he didn't know my stance, he wasn't even listening. So I was really mostly talking to myself. We were listening. <laughs> I mean, we were this. <laughs> I can see Trista down in Florida in front of a launch pad with her picket sign. There you go. Like, F Mars. <laughs> it it, it is really off, interesting. Off, though. off Mars. Off Mars. <laughs> off Mars. Off Mars. Mar- that's nice. O F F. Off Mars. Oh keep, my God. Keep, keep your <laughs> microbes off Mars. <laughs> Trista. Yes. Are you okay with the not not for the purpose of colonizing Mars, but are you okay with right now, like, the Curiosity rover and all the exploration of it, the way we're doing it, because the, those are robots. We don't know what they're stepping on or doing anything. Are you okay with that portion, the exploration? I'm really not. Okay, so you you think we should just have a – we should close our earthly borders? I do. Okay. I think What's... until we can learn to be responsible on our own planet and prove that we actually are willing to put resources toward reversing how we have – taken advantage of the resources beyond what is sustainable, that we really have no business going out and trying it on other planets. So what does the earth look like if we are, if we've achieved the the qualifications to expand? I I mean, I'm not a geologist. I can't tell you that. I can only tell you. Well, it's not, it's not the planet, it's the people. I mean, how, how are the people treating the planet? Yeah, I think it's the philosophical. I think that's where the sticking point is, is how do we not rape a planet yeah. or a second planet? I guess any, 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 planet. any planet, you know, we I, I, there's so much fake news. I don't even want to quote anything, but, you know, well, we can always say, it, just, just make it up. This is how okay. we say we just say allegedly. I heard this allegedly. allegedly. And then that covers all our bases. Uh, we've lost what, like eighty percent of Antarctica's uh, ice. Or yeah, yeah, like that's that. bullshit. Eighty <laughs> percent. Right. Damn. Yeah, that's what not true. That's fake news. That's <laughs> fake news. <laughs> but I will tell you this, guys. This this is my personal experience, and this is what concerns me. I went to Belize. I'm only name dropping that because I went to Belize. <laughs> you sorry, you um, went where? In March, I won a trip with Where'd my work. Belize. You went to Belize. I went to Belize, the nice. country. So um, they. We drove up to a Mayan, there was a Mayan uh, temple and everything. And on the way, there's there's rainforest. And Russell, please tell me if this is true or not. Is the rainforest uh, responsible for about 80% of the Earth's oxygen, or is that not a true statement? I think that might be true. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. I, well, I don't want to, you know, obviously we all, we're getting our news from different sources. No, just kidding. I'm just messing with you. But, <laughs> um, but what happened was a sugarcane company bought, a portion of it and we saw a plume of smoke coming out of the rainforest and i'm like what's going on there and they're like oh they're clearing out for sugar for sugar cane and i'm like wait a minute we're getting 80 percent of our oxygen from this pile of trees and whatnot and we're gonna just chop them the fuck down to get sugar cane is that kind of your point trista yeah, uh, I found it. It says there's been a six-fold increase in polar ice cap melting since the 90s. Yeah, that's the rate of... 600%, six faster times. ...than it used to be. Yeah, but there's still a um, crap ton, uh, a, a crap ton of ice. Both them, both so crap ton, is that like a jerk face? Yes. <laughs> How is that, a, is that a scientific NASA Elon yeah, Musk term? Um, I think that's uh, the duty head. Duty head. Defense. So how many crap tons does it take to get to Mars? <laughs> that's seven crap tons? It's uh, 12 crap tons. But Russell, if you're saying <laughs> you're saying two. crap ton, that goes against what you said before, which is we have to do something right now because we need the time to fix it because it's not going to be an overnight fix. That's the same thing with the ice caps as oh. it is with the Mars. I think if we were keeping points, I would get one. 
<laughs> I, I I'm going to say this. So Russ, Russell's point, I think, was the preparation of getting it, looking forward to doing that. We have just not been kind to our world and now are realizing the impact that we've had on it. And now we're trying to, we're behind the eight ball. We're kind of behind the power curve. We have to now, instead of being proactive, what are we doing? We have to be reactive and say, we need to clean up and then still not go forward, not doing. And that, underlines, yeah, and that underlines my philosophy, which is look how long it took us to start to be responsible for what we've been doing to this planet. And this is, and I agree with that. We were born here. And we took advantage of it and figured somebody else's problem. We'll let the next generation deal with it. Yeah, globally, we're shitting where we eat. Yeah, and so now you're going to tell me that we're we're perfectly fine to go other places. We're going to be we're going to be kinder to Mars or wherever than we were to our own planet. There is just no proof of that. Yeah, because we've never done it before. So let's do it and find out. All right, Russell. Woo! <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Russell, I'm just kidding, out, of, out of all the movies that you've seen regarding Mars, <laughs> which one do you think is the most realistic? Definitely Total the Martian. Recall. Martian. The Martian. Oh. With, <laughs> Total with, Recall. With, wait, so hang on. The Martian stars who? Um, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Thank you. Yep. Matt Damon. Sorry, that's an inside joke from Team America. Team America World Police, Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. Matt Damon. Um, and why do you say that? Why do you why do you think that's the most realistic? Well, because uh, the the guy who put together um, something to do with the W, I can't remember the, the author's name. Um, he William lot, Wallace. Uh, no. That's not right. He did a bunch of research on it, and um, you know his proposal in there is is in the float of how things actually work. There's a bunch of things that, you know, the, the nitpickers say, well, that's not how this would work or this is different or so forth. But, um, you know, I mean, I think that that is probably the most realistic we've seen so far. Realistic, um, think, except for he survived. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he can't point. die. I feel like the dude's going to die. Like, you go oh, into yeah, those kinds yeah, of situations. Right. The, the scenario that he was faced with would kill him. Yeah, <laughs> we're yeah, pretty, exactly. pretty clear on that. Um, but, uh you know, I mean, it, it's a nice thought experiment and uh, it's a stepping, it's a step towards the process. I mean, uh, to some point, I would definitely agree that the whole film is pro Mars uh, colonization propaganda. I would agree. With that. I would agree. Yeah. I, I mean, who else that. gets Matt Damon to do it unless, you know, you want to stop fracking and start owning a zoo, running a zoo and, and going on to Mars. I forgot about the poop part that he used <laughs> the poop to make. Well, I... well, if you read, if you read the book, um, they go into a lot more details on it. It's, it's, on poop? <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not reading the book. <laughs> don't do it. Hell do no. they have pictures and samples in the book? No, no, la, 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 not listening. No. Well, I listened listen to it on Audible, so uh, you know, I got to I got to listen to it. Uh, so it was like, then Matt Damon squatted and went. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. God, okay, I would draw the question. I'm so sorry. Hey, so at least we're having fun with this, guys. So, we're not like yelling at each other. What, I think Russell, that's a good what's point. the least? Accurate Mars movie. Total Recall. Obviously, Total Recall. Total Recall. Total Recall. <laughs> Total Recall. <laughs> Two Although, uh, reeks. Two reeks. Two reeks. Oh, I did like the thing <laughs> that up of his nose. That was pretty fun. <laughs> that, yeah. was, that was true. The little thing with the probe thing popped it out. Oh, so gross. Get get to the party. See you at the party, Kohagen. Get your ass to Mars. See you at the party, <laughs> Richter. had to split. I, I I do the best. I'm going to do the best Arnold impression once he gets ejected onto the atmosphere of Mars. It's actually is really good. It's pretty good, right? Yeah. Except when you're looking at it in person. Yeah, he's. I now have to go to like confession and therapy. <laughs> I think Chris thought I was constipated there for a second. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you're going to throw up or poop or both. Um, I did both, sir, but you didn't microbes, see microbes, bro. Microbes. <laughs> I. What about the macrobes? Those are the ones they're, that really concern they me. They must feel very neglected. <laughs> <laughs> Macro. Oh, I'm not going to say it. Nope. Don't. No. Do it. No. I am not saying that. Is there anything that we left out that needs to be addressed? Any logistical points about how to get there, how to get back, how many people we want to live there eventually? How big is this colony going to be? How long is terraforming going to take? Chris wants the ins and outs. 
was that Trista? Sorry. My heart is breaking with all those questions. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I am half logical and half emotional because I'm a weird little bitch. So those, I mean, those, those things look, interest me. Look, look at the European colonization of the Americas. So they started with small colonies of a couple of hundred and expanded and grew. And uh, you know now we have a population of millions. And so you know why couldn't the same thing happen to Mars? I can't disagree with that. So basically, it's a very small step. Like you get two, three people with some robots, and then AI comes and takes over. Oh, and blows us all up. Yeah. Have you seen Terminator? So, <laughs> would you, Russell? Would you say when you say terraforming, you mean to make the atmosphere habitable, right? Well, the soil and the atmosphere, and providing the, the protections for the people who are there. Um, so eventually the people that are there wouldn't have to live in a bubble is that they could actually breathe outside, right? Ideally. Okay. That's Cause not, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a novice on the subject, so I'm asking rudimentary questions. So I apologize. It's not going to happen overnight. And, right. Uh, of course. They'd have to find some way to keep the atmosphere in place. Maybe they would build gigantic, you know, city sized domes and. Uh, right. Yeah, it'd be like a skyscraper you just couldn't leave yep. out there without a suit or something. But to your point, I mean, one of your favorite movies, well, your favorite movie, the one that's on the island. Aliens. Was terraforming. Uh, hello. And we've yep. never done it. We've seen it. We've seen it in these, you know, sci-fi shows and whatnot. But we don't honestly know the undertaking. We can talk about the science behind it, but do we know that no. the gravity is going to hold the atmosphere or whatever the other right. factors the, going, I right? understand the theory it's behind it, error. but the actual – the actual actuality, which is really dumb, <laughs> which is the dumbest phrase I may have ever uttered, uttered ever. Uh, uh, that part is very challenging for my mind to grasp. I get the theory, but how it would work in reality, I struggle with mentally. Well, in Aliens, didn't they have like a, a, a giant uh, fusion power machine? That correct. Yeah, like a reactor that sucked in. It kind of automated to your point. Yes, correct, sir. It sucked in the atmosphere and, and stuck out, you know, something that would be good for humans. I mean. But it was a sci-fi movie, and we don't know if that works, right? I mean, well, I think it, that's what we're talking about, right? How's the practicality of it, you know, the actual implementation, I guess, is the question. <laughs> Apparently, Russell's still not muted in the other room. <laughs> Is that Alexa? Yeah, no, that, that, some that, random text. Yeah, it was my text message. You're going to have on the... So, uh, so you hey, probably, man, you got a coupon waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you want to probably edit that out. Hello, <laughs> Twitter world. Oh, are you kidding me, Russell? We're actually going to add more shit in than you could ever imagine. You don't edit. What the, what the heck? Are you, man, you honestly do not know us, sir. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what Mars would need for us to live there would be a thicker atmosphere so you could you know, not expired just by being outside in it. Um, more That'd oxygen. Nice. More, more oxygen. And, um, you know, m more uh, you know, more pressure so they're able to survive. And uh, probably some way to protect from the from the radiation waves. And so some either restarting uh, Mars's magnetic field or creating something that would uh, provide protection like that. You know, some kind of uh, magnetic shield to keep the cosmic rays from uh, from pummeling the on the surface that that's what it needs and so that would be the terraform process there so you so mars had a magnetic field at some point yeah i mean uh they think ours is caused by the circulating uh the poles you know, no, well, the, no the plasma or the lava underneath the core the, the, the okay, iron right. core spinning and so uh, mars being smaller uh had a core that was uh, at one point and they can tell it was there because of the uh volcanoes that are left okay over. Okay, but they think that Mars, his core has either ha has gone solid or maybe cool if, down. It, if right. it's uh, if it's still liquid, it's only liquid on very deep down, and so it's not enough to provide a magnetic, magnetic field for the. What's uh, interesting though is part of the red color is it's very ferric, right? There's a lot of iron on I Mars. Is that is that correct? Yeah. So maybe we could just take the take that rake the whole top of Mars and make magnets on both ends. And just make a mag make a huge like electromagnet something to to do that. There's probably some thought behind. I that. think that might be the more complicated way to do it. <laughs> of course, I don't do anything. Mark easy, doesn't Russell. do anything simple, dude. Please, 
You should see how I open my car door. I have to hop on my left foot three times, rub my belly, <laughs> pat my tummy. I didn't. You're. O I didn't even know you're OCD after all these years. Foot. Yeah, I'm CDO. Let's see. Yeah. Oh dear Jesus. I'm a dyslexic. He's too. a dyslexic OCD. Yeah. You beat me to the punch line. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like, "That'll be COD," and I go, "What? CCO? What are you talking about?" <laughs> God. Wrap it up, bro. All right, are we wrapping this do up? We, do so, Russell. Do we miss anything from the logistical standpoint? I don't well, want to I mean, leave anything out. I mean, I think that uh, you you need to get an actual Martian uh, scientist to 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 give you you know. That's more you, detail. dude. That is not me. I'm you just, are our expert like, today. Who who digs into what he can can online and and, and reads? But I mean, as I said, it, it's a process. They got to try it, or they won't know what works. So just go forward. That's it. Just that fortitude. I mean, look, that's what made Merck a pretty great, but it also did a lot of other stuff too. That's that's the concern, right? Is the other stuff. It's the candy wrapper part. Is the that's Indian right. reservations. Yes. Yeah, but they have casinos now. So come on, man. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Casinos hosted by Martian microbes. I, I, I can see it already. Oh my God, that is amazing. <laughs> Martian Do you have microbe. to be a direct descendant of that microbe to work at that casino? Correct. They do genetic Martian. Tech. Did I just hear crickets go off? I yeah. swear I just heard crickets in my too. <laughs> Martian microbe is the next metal album I'm releasing. Martian microbe. Yes. <laughs> Microbial assault. Yes. <laughs> um, so I think we got that covered. Do does anybody would Russell, would you like to have a final point? And then Trista, please put a bow on it because we let Russell finish start, so you get to finish. Look how nice we are. I think I made my case. <laughs> I think you have also for you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Trista, how are how you doing? I think that I just want to end by saying that we have a lot of work to do as a species, as a global community of treating each other and the space we are in better. And that's where we need to start. And my dog Bella agrees. I was like, I hope I that, wasn't that was Russell. Russell. <laughs> like, I was like, wow. Bella, Bella says, is that that podcast still going? It's time for you to take me out. There it goes. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. This was a lot of fun. I know we have some philosophical differences, but I think I think we all want to be good to each other. I mean, we started with "Don't be a dick." Can we end with "Don't be a dick"? How about "Be excellent to each other"? Be excellent. more excellent and Bill, party on Theodore, and part party <laughs> over under through. Yes. Any closing thoughts, uh, Russell or Trista? I just really appreciate you guys having us on. This was super fun. And the opportunity to share my views on this was really a unique opportunity. So, and yep. it's always fun to have philosophical conversations with Russell. I think it's fun. And I think we all were very pleasant to each other. We yeah. obviously disagree, but that's the whole point of even our podcast is we, we just want to get people together. We want differences of, of thought and opinion. Of I mean, that's the whole point. How do yeah. we get to, we got to start somewhere and then we meet somewhere else. Obviously. It's okay if we disagree, but let's just be civil. You know, yeah. that's, exactly. that's the whole point. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's what our philosophy has always been to do that. And we, we thank you for coming on and yes, sharing. Thank you guys. I mean, you know, we, we started the divorce proceedings. For you guys, so <laughs> that means me and Mark, not you guys. We're very excited about that. But <laughs> Chris, do you have any final no, thoughts? Sir, I'm good. Thank you guys for being on uh, go team Mars or not go team Mars, whatever you like. <laughs> or <laughs> team microbes, team, team microbes. microbes. Uh, there was a, there was a hashtag. There was a number of signs bro. somewhere Micro with that. Bro. <laughs> micro bros i you know that would make a great t-shirt great t-shirt you it was just microbe on the front and on the back just bro <laughs> <laughs> and people are like what the, what the yes i'll please, just can please. i get a tank top with that please <laughs> i want double zero bro okay <laughs> that's my jersey double okay. zeros sure, you're now required to go out and start a t-shirt company and that's your first product okay you talked me into it. You just talk Chris into it. I'm easy but, sell. You know, there's some logistics, and honestly, I think that's going to destroy the earth. And I don't want to yeah, start. Yeah, there's a, a philosophical company. conversation about my, a yeah, company. my philosophical Next about starting a t-shirt company. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, because we never say this on any of our podcasts, 
Can you please subscribe to us, follow <laughs> us, rate us, review us, give us positive or realistic feedback, please. <laughs> <laughs> All that. Thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Trista. Hopefully we'll have some more of these. And the more subjects we have, we need to get you guys on a beer Googles because I think a couple beers in Russell, that would be fun. He becomes or even more uh, logistical. I oh, love it. No way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's not pretty. <laughs> it, tighten you up? it doesn't loosen you up. It tightens you up. That's weird. Maybe uh, he needs tequila. Tell him. <laughs> wait. Do we have a second to tell you the story? Yes. Oh, story hold on. Time. Can we hold on? Wait do for, we, have, wait can for, we do it? Wait for Come it. Right, wait here for we go. It. You know the one okay, you, go. No, I don't know which one you went. The one you told me about why you don't drink a lot. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> go. So I, I, I was at my, my friend's college, and in his quasi fraternity, it wasn't a real fraternity, but they, you know, we were like a fraternity. They had a beer tap in the basement that was just like, you know, that's, that's you know, 24 7, you know, you get your beer here. And um, uh, we went to the, to the game. I went to, there to uh, attend, went to the party, and I got so incredibly smashed that uh, I was uh, not at all intelligible. Of course, what I what what uh, I did when I got that drunk was to start speaking German to uh, everyone. People didn't know German, not not that I know German, but I was just speaking German. And um, this is what I did when I got really drunk. And didn't you get on a bike? Oh, that was a different time. I I I got um, I got really drunk on uh, vodka. I think it was your your favorite drink. And um, I said, well, I wonder how my motor con uh, controls are because, you know. He started doing experiments on himself to see how, how <laughs> this is perfect for beer Googles, you guys. Because he was just trying to see, like, how good could he okay. ride a bike? Wait, how drunk he wait. Got. I think we should just record a beer Googles episode right now and just talk about all this. <laughs> so so <laughs> I, got on the I got on the bike and I could ride it absolutely fine, but I could not navigate between two parked cars. And I ran into the car. That would be, yeah, you always have to pick the third image. How are Russell. you speaking German if you don't know German? I had had some German, but, but you know, not enough to. to I think, it, does Deutschmark need to make an appearance? Yes, Deu the German in Deutschmark does not like that you are culturally appropriating German for your own drunken needs. <laughs> so We do not like this. You know, Mark, we do not like these kinds of practices. Mark is bilingual. So why don't you say something in German, Mark? I'm also, what's that word we had earlier? Microbial lingual? What's the, <laughs> bi, no, binerdal. I'm also binerdal. Well, and binerdal. Binerdal. Ich, ich kann Deutsch sprechen, ja. Ich kann gut Deutsch sprechen. It's, yeah, Mark's it, bilingual. Really long time. About That's about as much German as I can remember, is it? That's all you need, bibliotech. Wait, that's Spanish. And my favorite band is Rammstein. <laughs> and so I'm, you know, I know four words. Du hast. Du hast. Du hast mich. That's it. That's all I know. Gefragt. Yeah. That means yeah I know you smell yeah. so good in German. And so um, welcome back to our not conscious intervention. So Russell, <laughs> how long have you had this problem? <laughs> so we, we've had a bicycle incident and we had a German speaking. Oh, incident. The lesson I, the lesson I got from this was that when I drink, I need to stop before I'm past the level. Probably about four drinks is where, where I, I get troublesome. Is so where I, you want to start doing experiments on yourself. Yes. Yeah, so so I, I keep below that level. At least May they're I... not experiments on others. I think it's hilarious that you do them on yourself. It's like you're like your own Dexter. You just, but it's just you. There's nobody and you else. you stay alive. You stay alive, but there's nobody else on the show. It's just you. That's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know why I find <laughs> that so funny. No one would watch that. <laughs> I, think, I think all of us should share one drunk story of our lives since we're doing this. Oh, my God. I have one. Okay, I, I went to a college that was very small. Christopher and I went to the same school. It was an eight to one male to female ratio, and there were a total of about 1,200 people. So we had our pickings of 150 women. And Chris and I look like we do. I, I don't know if you've seen our YouTubes, but we look like we do. I'm hot. Shut up. Well, you're hot, but I'm not. So there's this what place do you say? downtown. What's your in our expression? Little you have a face for podcasting? Yeah, I have a face for radio, for oh, sure. Oh, there you go, radio. Yeah, I've totally got a face for radio. So we're in this town that we, in which the school resides, and it is just as much of a little shithole as you would think, and to the point where there is a square. You're not going to name the school. I will. It's Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Prescott, motherfucking Arizona. Small How about town. that? 30,000. Oh, my God. 
Embry Sorry, Riddle. Up, Embry Riddle, Aeronautical University. Wow. Shitty yeah, we're school. fancy schmancy. We have like four Shitty names in our college. college. And a hyphen. We have a hyphen in it too. Nope. Yeah, it means we both regret it. Big, we both big regret mistake. it, but we would have never met had we gone Correct. to our respective but schools. It's a whole mistake. thing. You want to talk about how Chris and I came together? That's a whole big other mistake. love love affair. But we're in Whiskey Row because that's all you can do is either fly planes or drink alcohol at this town. That's kind of all we can do, right? <laughs> not a good it's mix. Not a good mix. Yeah, you don't do them together. No, you don't. It's or eight bottles. What is it? eight, eight hours, hours bottle, bottle of the throttle? throttle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, sir. Eight hours bottle to throttle. So we're in we're in this little whiskey row area, and we're at I'm at this like hickey country tavern. Billy's it was Matt's Saloon. Billy's what? Okay, Matt's Saloon. Yeah, Not Billy's Western shit. Bar. It was Matt's Saloon. That's how fucked this place was. Yeah, it's Matt's Saloon, the Girly Street Frill. Come on. Can we can we get better names? No, we can't. Next. Bucky O'Neill's. Go ahead. Just come on. come on, wrap it up. All right. So this I'm from Philadelphia. Guy was at the bar and had a Phillies hat on. And when I drink, I smoke. Very not good. Don't do it, ladies and gentlemen. So I walk up to the guy and I'm like, hey, you're from Philly? Where part of Philly are you from? Because I think he's just, who wears a Philly's hat? And the guy looks at me and he's like, bah, bah. and I'm like, well, what's up, man? I'm like, where are you? And he goes, fuck off or something. And I look at him, swear to God, I look at him, stare him straight in the eye. I hold out my hand. I take my cigarette and I put it out on the back of my hand while I'm staring at him. <laughs> and I go... If you think I'm willing to do this to me, what do you think I'm going to do to you? Oh, man. <laughs> That's the darkness that is Mark when he drinks. I have no, I don't drink. And do you still That's have the star? <laughs> I actually do. I'll take a picture of it and I'll send it to you guys. There's two. It's not well, even... actually, there's multiple because the first time I put it out and then the second time was me going, hey, guys, I can put cigarettes out on the back of my hand. Check this out. Oh, I didn't know I that. Really I was really drunk. Yeah, I'm really I'm drunk. That's the kind of crap that I would do. Yeah. Just to see if it feels right. I mean, sometimes you bleed just to know you're alive. You know? <laughs> Is that a sublime song? I think it's Goo Goo, Goo Dolls. Dolls. Don't they? Don't they do one? Bleed just to know you're alive. Yeah, that Goo Goo Dolls. Oh, yeah. she, poop poop dolls. Well, guys, thanks so much for coming on. I don't know how we got two hours out of this, but fuck, that was great. It was great. Thanks Thank you guys having... very much. I'm sorry that we curse as much as we do. Also, we tend to be a little. We tend to be loose. We want to make this fun. It's all good. It's all good. Russell, that, that uh, adult uh, hashtag in the uh, XML, so that uh, I yes, think... explicit. Yeah, there we, you go. Big explicit on every single one of our nah, podcasts. Who cares? <laughs> well, we appreciate it, Russell. Thank you for your first podcast ever. Yay! Do you have aspirations of doing something like Trista does, where you have a, a podcast that's regular and that you get no. people on to talk about? No, I'm a chronic supporter. I like being behind the scenes, and is uh, not my my place to be. Here. In the in the front of the show, but he has a lot to say, right? Yeah, I I really enjoy the conversation. You could have a Mars podcast, you know that, right? Oh no, please! What are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm just <laughs> I mean, okay. Fine, sorry. I would try. I apologize. Oh my god, I've got the perfect thing. Go. Polo on Mars. Yes, <laughs> that that is what like, you wait, call wait, it. Wait, wait, like horses or water well his last name is pole their last I, name is polo. i get it but water polo uh, no i'm thinking horsey well, polo. it'd be both both we we, we crash asteroids to make a pool so okay. they can play water polo okay and we have we terraform the outside to have grass horses for the polo and the i, I prefer the, the the marco polo reference which is the explorer who connected oh, oh my us. god that's even smarter what if you than get us? the horses into the pool and then they could do the Geico commercial. Yes. Marco Polo's and Mars going, Marco, see, see, Polo, Marco Polo. Marco Polo. Marco Polo. <laughs> I'm not thinking horses are going to be on the first uh, it, it's for, reverse couple of trips. <laughs> Why not? They did it to the United States. They brought horses over to South America. They'll be on the fourth I'm, ship. Yeah. The fourth <laughs> rocket. The Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, and the what the? The <laughs> horse, the pony. <laughs> the pony. If you want to ride it. Yes. Genuine will be on that. There you go. Even for Secretariat. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's go. brilliant. That is, I like Polo on Mars. I'm, <laughs> we just created your own podcast. Is that okay that we You're created welcome. your podcast for you? <laughs> play it, play it, or be <laughs> it. No, Marco Polo on Mars. Marco Polo. I'll be sure to let you know if I, if I start it. You know he'll have you as a guest. You know, well, your wife already has all the equipment, man. All you got to do is press record. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Well, thank you again. This, yeah, you has been, this has been awesome. Thanks so this much. This is what's great about our. This is what's great about this. Though we have said goodbye fifty times, we just can't say goodbye because we love each other. It, 
and and it's because Again, it's final, final apologies to the listeners. This is okay. not my fault. <laughs> it, uh, oh, you're not going to take personal accountability for your statements, Russell? No. That sounds no, very not, not of you. The inability to close the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Hit the music. You, you're going to do it, man. I'm going to do it. Thanks Thank you so guys much, again. guys. Subscribe. Have a join, great day, everybody. Follow us. Review. Rate. All that good stuff. Thank you guys again for coming on. Enjoy that cutout music, and we're going to be awesome.